National Hoodoo Heritage Month, and that means you guys need to be over at RootworkStyle.com getting your Rootwork deodorant. That's where you need to be. You need to get your Rootwork deodorant right now at RootworkStyle.com. And um, don't forget, guys, tomorrow we should um, we should be premiering the trailer for the new documentary. The trailer is ready, just making sure some other things are set up. But yeah, the trailer's ready, and we should be ready to let it pop off tomorrow, just making sure some other things are lined up. But um, yeah, y'all stay tuned for that. Most likely, we're going to go ahead and have that released tomorrow. It is ready, and it looks real crisp. We're just making sure some other things are being lined up. But waiting on everybody to get in the room. All right. What I want to talk about, I'm going to get some calls in a minute. We're talking about why a lot of black Americans, Foundation of Black Americans in particular, are really pushing back on immigration right now. Right now, there's a major border crisis because Foundation of Black Americans, we are demanding tangibles. The Democrats who we've been supporting and we've been the Democrat base for a long time, They've been running the scam and the con game on us, and they found out that we're not really trying to feel that. We ain't feeling that. We're not rocking with the con games no more. We're telling them we're going to have to have something tangible specifically for our lineage group. We're not going to do the whole kumbaya thing right now. We're talking business. This ain't about loving and hugging and all get together. Because whenever we as black people, foundational black Americans in particular, when we start talking about what we need that's tangible with us, they don't talk the way they talk with other groups. Other groups, it's all about what they're going to get and the numbers. When the Asian community is aggrieved, they're talking about $3 billion here. 1500 billion whatever there uh, 150 million here they're they're talking numbers when they talk about the LGBT community they're saying 50 million is going to go here 20 million is going to go there they're throwing numbers out there with all these other groups they just get right to the nitty gritty with us when we talk about what we need well we got to set up a commission and we got to do an 800 page report. And also we need to be out here loving and hugging each other. Let's all come together. They start using these emotional words. You know, we got to stop, you know, let's stop hate. And uh, we're going to stop the hate and be all about equality and love. And we got to learn how to get together and uh, be diverse. We got to be diverse. We, we start using these terms that really have a lot of emotional connotations to them. We all need to get together and we're all one and we're all God's people. There's no race. There's just the human race. And, you know, we all just got to get together and you know, see past our racial differences and see that we're just all one. We, we get that talk, and that's a con game. That's an emotional play because a lot of black folks have gone for that. A lot of black folks say, oh, you know, I, I do need a little white love in my life. I, 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 a good hug from from white women. So I love that. You know, yeah. Now nah, that ain't working like it used to. Yeah, the the reparations hug. Go look at the Bucci Bear, the last, no, 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 no. It wasn't the last one, but it was one of the, um, Bucci Bear episodes where we had a character who's promised to give reparations hugs. They're going to hug everybody. That's real. A lot of these skits are based on reality. So we're not trying to get reparations hugs. We're trying to get some real tangibles. And we haven't wavered off that. And they're not used to us not wavering. Because a lot of times when we talk about what we need as far as tangibles, hey, we, we go to the government, we go to our elected officials and tell them, hey, we, we, we're going to need something. Then they'll shame us. They'll send a couple of Negroes out here. Hey, y'all stop begging the government. 
Y'all pull y'all self up by your bootstraps. Y'all stop being, y'all stop being lazy. You see all these other people that come over here, they come over here with $2 in their pocket and they come over here and be successful. Y'all need to be ashamed of yourself. See, that don't work either because now we're seeing all the money they're giving to these damn immigrants. So y'all not going to shame us with all of that pull your damn self up by your bootstraps and we're looking at just money being thrown at these immigrant groups. These people are getting subsidized hotel stays at nice hotels. They're getting prioritized with jobs and they're getting all types of health benefits with our tax dollars. And out there in Chicago, they've been very vocal because Chicago is one of the ground zero place places that they're just dumping them off by the, the, the loads. They're getting immigrants from all these different countries and they're sitting them right down in these black neighborhoods, especially out there in Chicago and the Chicago family. They're really speaking out heavily, heavily about it. There was another um, press conference they had today where there was a, uh, I think it was a community center or something like that. That's smack dab in the black neighborhood. And they're trying to make it an immigrant shelter. And the community is like, hell, hey, hey, come on. Hey, we don't want this here. See, they're not used to us pushing back like that. I take my hat off to Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. We have a right to say, hey, we don't want these communities where our, our resources are already limited. We don't want this as a dumping ground and a testing center for people we don't know anything about. You're just opening the gate and letting people come over from all of these countries with these weird backgrounds that nobody's vetting. And you're setting them right down in a black neighborhood. You're doing this all over the country. And, and the black community is saying enough is enough. That's another reason why the Democrats are in trouble with the black vote. And they're doing this because of the black vote. See, this is like a, a case of the, the what came first, the chicken or the egg. Because the Democrats are doing bad with black voters, they think they're going to just flood the zone with all of these these. This new voter voter block, they're going to have a new voting base. So they're trying to flood the zone. And that's why when they let all of these illegal immigrants over, they immediately try to get them IDs. You see, just like in Minnesota, they make it so that undocumented immigrants can get an ID. That's so they can hurry up and vote. Because remember, if you get an ID in one state, you can get an ID anywhere. You understand? So they want to get these people vote ready. So when they start running that game on us about, man, we got to do something about the Republicans. The Republicans is trying to make getting an ID to vote. They're trying to make that a requirement. And, you know, black people, this is this is going to affect you, black people. But we fought for the right to vote. They're trying to take us back to Jim Crow. Remember they were running that game? Y'all remember that game they were running on us when the Republicans were making it a requirement that people have an ID to vote, which is good. That's a good thing. The Democrats were trying to get us to stomp for it. Hey, black people, look what they doing to us. No, ain't no us. There's no us. We're fine. We got IDs. No, but a lot of poor black people, who they, they have troubles getting ID. Nigga, stop it. Stop it. If a motherfucker ain't got no ID, they're a crackhead or something. They don't count. Most black, we got IDs. We got IDs. We got our documents. Um, um, not having an ID is not our damn problem. That's not an issue that we have. We got identification. We have all of all of the identification we need. So they tried to run that game on us and it didn't work because the real deal was they were trying to get us to stump for the whole ID thing so that it would benefit these immigrants coming over here so they can get IDs, be able to vote and then practice their damn anti-black racism on us. So there's a pushback and the people out there in Chicago in particular, they're really, really vehement about, hey, we don't want all of these people being flooded into our neighborhoods. That's a bad thing. A lot of these people come from criminal backgrounds. A lot of these people, man, y'all letting them out of jail. Uh, these people got some kind of sex crimes that they've done. They out there trapping. It, it, it's it's bad on the community. And the limited resources that we already have is already a problem. So we should be more up in arms about that. 
And we got to stop going for all of the symbolic gestures. I saw a tweet of Kamala Harris earlier. She was up here swearing in that LaFonza lady. Like, look at this. The first openly black lesbian being sworn in by a black woman. Oh, this is great. No, they, no, it wasn't Kamala Harris. It was the NAACP. They tweeted it. It was the NAACP. They tweeted, come on, let me, let me read the tweet. Some of you guys look at my page. Let me read the tweet that the NAACP tweeted. They think we're going for this symbolism nonsense. The tweet was, hold on. This moment will go down in history. LaFonza, the first black, openly LGBTQ senator, an only black woman to serve in the nation's highest legislative body was sworn in today by the nation's first black female vice president. We love it here. Go to hell. Y'all can go to hell with that. They can go all the way to hell with that. We're not going for no symbolism because when it comes to doing something for black people or black women, they ain't doing a damn thing. Y'all don't y'all don't forget Kamala Harris was locking black women up left and right out here in California, man. Don't get it twisted. And I saw some talk show or some um news show, and they were talking about the Democrats' polling numbers being down. They were talking about how low the Democrat polling numbers are. And they made a, a, a very strong point about Kamala Harris. They were talking about some of the poll numbers and the problem with Kamala Harris. See, they try to make it seem like Kamala Harris's numbers of her popularity within the black community is low because of us black men hating on her black girl magic. Remember that little con game they were trying to play? Um, remember when Kamala was first running and I made a tweet about her doing all of that performative dancing and shit. All of the Democrats attacked me. I'm talking about when I say all of them, I mean all of them. They had a little meeting at the think tanks and they all thought, okay, we need to attack this nigga. They were all attacking me for criticizing Kamala doing her performative sister girlisms. And they see that I wasn't the only one who felt like that. She's black only around election time. And the minute she win, shout out to the first Asian American. But whenever Kamala Harris goes out here and you see her polling numbers are low when it comes to black people, they try to sit here and say, well, it's these hateful, jealous black men just hating a, a black woman shine. You know, Roland and those guys were saying that. Y'all hate to see a sister girl um, blow up. Y'all see, hate to see a highly intelligent black woman miss me with that. Y'all hate to see her with a white man. You remember Michael Eric Dyson was talking all of that Sambo talk? Yeah. Well, y'all, if y'all black men still had stepped up, um, Katanji Brown and Kamala Harris wouldn't have to go get a white man. The white man appreciate their chocolate charm and their caramel charisma and their dark deliciousness. And uh, Y'all remember he was saying that coon shit? <laughs> the white man appreciates them. They were running that con game on us, but here's the real deal, though. The reason why Kamala Harris's numbers are in the tank with black people and this white woman pointed this out because black women don't fuck with no damn Kamala Harris. That's what it is. Black women don't like Kamala. They don't like to say that out loud. That's the reality. Black women don't like no damn Kamala Harris because sisters, foundational black American sisters can see how fake she is. You know why? Because sisters have to deal with the Kamala Harris every day at work. Y'all got a, a, a white ass kissing mammy who who thinks she's exotic or whatever and tries to pull some kind of racial rank over you because she's mixed with something or she's exotic or she's some type of um, non-black other. And they got her in some kind of supervisor position and she's the designated work mammy. So she fakes that sister girl shit around you and you can see through it. And you know good and well she goes to the supervisor, she goes to the bosses and tells everything that you're doing. That's why you know not to tell her scamming as your business. Y'all got a Kamala Harris at your job. Fake as hell. See you every time. Hey, girl. Girl, look at your hair. Who You got to tell me who braids your hair, girl. Please. 
she tried to assist the girl you and and girl you know girl you know these white folks boy yeah i'm trying to get a supervised position but these white folks you know how they do us girl and then you get to talking yeah you know i'm, I'm supposed to been have me a supervised position you get to telling this mammy little shit and then she run tell the boss and then your ass get written up because this little mammy you confided in and told on your ass yeah the, the kamala harris at the job she's the designated snitch she's the negro whisperer you got a kamala harris at every job and they get around zaddy um, bob chiquetta i found out that she's been faking sicknesses taking vacations to Cancun. Yeah, well, remember when she said she was sick? Her ass wasn't sick. That big black bitch went down to Mexico. <laughs> so they be telling on your ass. <laughs> them, them Kamala Harris types. <laughs> That's why people don't like the sisters don't like Kamala fake ass. That's who don't like her. As, as you shouldn't like her. You think? We don't like her either. She's phony and when somebody sits up here and says what she ain't going to do for black society, yeah, all that dancing ain't going to fix that. You ain't going to dance your way out of that. Yeah. But um, we in here. Let me go. Y'all raise your hand. Let me get some folks in here in a second because we've got a lot of folks in here. So I want to chop it up with the family and see what's on the family's mind. Let's get Sir Major in here real quick. Sir Major, hop in, bro. What's up, brother Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Man, first of all, I got to give you um, give you your praises, brother. Uh, thank you so much for educating us because you called this shit out almost a year ago. You were talking about how we were going to be replaced by immigration. Uh, yeah. And I just posted a video out of Chicago, Illinois, where there was a Hispanic migrant or illegal alien who beat the dog shit out of a black brother who happened to be homeless Wow. And yeah, so the videos just just got posted. Uh, the mayor of Chicago is going to have blood on his hands. Mark my words, mm -hmm. man. Man, thank you, brother. Man, yeah, dude. And what's what's bad? We've seen cases where some of these immigrant women from these immigrant backgrounds out here jumping on little black girls. It was like some kind of um, Pacific Island chick out here. We thought she was Hispanic, but she was actually like Samoan or something. Beat up a little black girl in Long Beach. There were, it was somewhere else where there were two Mexican women jumped on a black girl. Yeah, some of these cowardly people start attacking our kids, man. So we're not stumping for that immigration like the Democrats want us to stump because we know what it is. You're just bringing over a bunch of people who got damn hostilities towards us. What's up, Ani? What's going on, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing good. First of all, I want to send prayers up to James Small. Yes. He's in the hospital right now. Yes. I spoke with him earlier. Yes. Okay. And uh, just wonder if you saw that they got the immigrant that played in Selma playing Bass Reeves in a new movie coming out this year. Yeah. And how Sam Samuel L. Jackson spoke on that. Just wanted to hear your thoughts on what, that. What did Sam say about it? Well, Sam said back then that the, the only reason they get the British actors is because they have classical training is in, in their less money. Mm. So uh, that's that's pretty. Yeah, he's been he, he uh, all of the immigrants have been commenting on what Samuel L. Jackson has said, Idris Elba, Daniel Kalula and all of that. But, yeah, he said that. Wow. I'm, I'm going to look into that. But, yeah, the dude. He, he's a good actor. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. And I like Idris Elba. I think Idris Elba is a phenomenal actor. Um, <clears throat> now the guy who played, who's now playing Bass Reeves and he played in Selma as Dr. King, but let's keep it a buck. I saw Selma, nigga, not memorable at all. Yeah, you, you, you don't remember anything from that movie. I saw it and damn near went to sleep. Yeah, yeah. The soul wasn't there, man. The soul and the spirit just wasn't there. The spirit of Dr. It, it wasn't there, man. You know, not even been on no hater shit. You know, I can respect somebody's acting chops, but the spirit ain't there. You know, when you play a historical figure, man, the 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 spirit, you got to kind of have the spirit of that person. And that comes from the lineage, man. That's why um, 
Lawrence Fishburne played Ike Turner so well. He had that lineage spirit. That's why Denzel played Malcolm so well. Even Denzel was like, hey, some of that shit, you can't get that from a script. You know, I was channeling the spirit of Malcolm. You know, you can't really get that from a script. That's why certain people, when they try to play some of our historic figures and they're not from the lineage, it falls flat. Cynthia Revo, again, the Harriet thing. That's why it, it, that, that wasn't a cultural phenomenon. Nobody really felt it. White folks liked it. The few who went to saw it, we didn't feel that. And some of y'all forgot that Cynthia Revo played Aretha Franklin in a very forgetful film. None of y'all even remember that. That's how bad that flopped. I don't know if it was a TV movie or something. It, it, just the aesthetics of it was horrible. You don't look nothing like Aretha. Don't act nothing like Aretha. You know, no, 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 no. You know, you don't have the energy of the spirit. That's just what it is. And they would feel the same way when we try to play some of their icons. They don't want um, um, us playing their icons. They want their people playing their icons. Fair enough. But a lot of them just don't have that, that spirit. When we play some of these characters, th these directors, they understand that the spirit will resonate with black audience members. They don't want that spirit connection to be there. You know, that's why they had such a problem with the Malcolm X movie. And, and I give props to Spike for making it happen because they were trying to sabotage the brother. But we felt that. We felt that. When Denzel played um, um, Malcolm, we felt it. We felt that. When Angela Bassett played Tina, we felt that. You understand? We felt it. And speaking of Tina Turner, there's a clip going around of Tina Turner talking about Africa. And some of the tethers got mad. It's an old clip. This is a clip it's from the 70s. And she was talking about why she don't really like touring in Africa. She was like, you know, hey, man, I don't really like going over there, to be honest. You know, I go over there and the food ain't good and I'm not really getting a good vibe from the people. So, I, shit, I don't like going. She kept it a buck. Well, this was in the 70s. She just kept it a buck. Yeah, I don't know. Just don't like going over there. And they're like, oh, this, she, she doesn't like herself. Oh, look at this self-hating woman. She doesn't like her history. Yes. And what's funny, the, the, the Negroes sitting up here talking about how she don't like herself and a lot of black Americans. Oh, y'all niggas. Tina Turner is a representative of you niggas. You hit Africa. You niggas hit your motherland. You niggas don't know who you are. You hit your motherland. And then you look at the nigga Paige who's saying that they're in Indiana somewhere. They're always in Cleveland, Indiana, Valdosta. You're, you're tweeting about us hating the motherland and your ass is over here. It never fails. Do y'all understand how silly y'all look when y'all do that? Like, for real, this is why we be getting on y'all ass. Do you know how silly you look when you say that? Nobody hates the motherland more than a tether. Y'all niggas are, the, are getting the first thing smoking to get the hell out of there. Don't, don't, don't try to sell us the shame package of not wanting to be in Africa. Nigga, you, you gave somebody a hand job at the green card office to get the hell out of there. Nobody hates Africa more than Tethers. Keep it real. The shaming tactics don't work no more. That ain't going, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. Y'all can cut that bullshit out. Y'all go talk to Umar and people like that who's still running with the Wakanda package. <laughs> when the niggas say, all, all the Pan-Africanists are not over there. They talk that Pan-African shit right over here. All the Pan-Africanists ain't set up a damn thing over there. That's why all that shit is going in one ear and out the other. Ain't nobody going for that no more. Man, it's, it's late in the day. We're trying to get our shit popping over here. Ain't nobody about to, to run around selling Wakanda packages. All right, well, let's get some calls in here. Let's get, um, let me see. We've got a lot of folks. Let's get Rob Liberty. Rob Liberty. Rob Liberty. 
Yeah, hey, Tariq. I, I've been a fan for a couple years. I mean, I just appreciate you being a genuine guy. I'm obviously on the other side of the spectrum, but, I mean, I 100% respect you. But my question is, you say people are fed up with Kamala. I mean, what do you think the, the voter turnout is going to be in the next election, realistically? It's, um, it's going to be very interesting, man. I'm telling you, the Democrats are in trouble. This is why they're doing all this weird stuff to Trump, putting charges on them. These are desperation moves. You know, this is what they got to do to to slow down Trump's momentum, because they, the Democrats know they don't have no momentum with their voter base, which is us. We're their voter base. They're in trouble and they know it. And these numbers are going to be dismal around election season. So they're trying something. So they're desperately flooding the zone with all of these immigrants. This is a desperation play. And they're going to try to get them IDs as quickly as possible and offer them um, Goya and beans and all types of shit to get to the polls. They're going to bribe them to get to the polls in order to vote. It, it's This is a big old con game. In a I mean, that, that that's scary stuff. I mean, what you're saying is is I don't necessarily know if that's the case, but I mean, that that's realistic and that's honestly scary stuff. I just hope people listen to that stuff yeah all right remember thank you so much yeah man this this is gonna be because you know they they can't they they're not gonna keep trying to bribe us to go to the polls they can bribe old niggas you know they offer some chicken wings and collard greens and that, that ain't gonna work no more that ain't gonna work because yeah, you can only do that with the old negroes and the old negroes are dying off unfortunately and because i think these are elders but you got a young voter base right now and our young folks are waking up because they're listening to people like us. Our young people ain't going for the, the okie doke no more. Some of the younger voters, I'm talking, I'm not talking about the elderly Negroes, but some of the younger ones, some of the 50 and under, they're like, hey, no, 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 no. You know, we, we, we need to get something. No, we need something for our vote. Y'all, we, we got too many of these immigrant groups in here. Y'all ain't doing nothing about that. You're not doing anything about a crime bill. We need a crime bill. And you guys are dragging ass on that and playing little games. And, you know, what are we really voting for? If you guys are just going to have contempt for us, what the hell are we voting for? So that's the, the consensus of a lot of foundational black Americans now. All right, let's get um to the moon. To the moon. What's up to the moon? Waiting on to the moon to hop up. And while we're waiting on to the moon, because this phone might be a little janky right now, um, let's get um, MOTEP. Then we'll get to the moon if his phone gets right. MOTEP, where you at, man? Oh, MOTEP is having problems. All right, let's try. Let me see. Let's get um, FBA sauce. All right, FBA sauce, hop on, brother. FBA sauce. All right, where you at? Okay, y'all got to get y'all phones together, man. Y'all janky phones slow up the momentum. All right. Let's try again. Let's get um. Hold on. I'm not gonna get the person. Let's get um. Let's get Stono. Stono Tone. All right, Stono Tone. Can you get on? All right, one of y'all niggas get on. Everybody phone is janky at the same time. Hello. Uh, all, right, all right, who is this? This is Nakim. We 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 spoke we spoke a few months ago. Nakeem? Yes, yes, Nakeem. I don't remember, but yes. what's up? Where you, no. where, you, where you from? Where you from, Nakeem? You see my flag. I'm from Nigeria. So. I can't see your flag, to be honest. I, okay, I, I can't see what's what. But go ahead. You're from Nigeria, so what's on your mind? Well, what's on my mind, sir? Uh, I was wondering why, why we don't deserve reparations, sir. We've been, working, we've been working in the States for years. We have so many doctors. You know, so so, so many uh, plumbers. You know, work, working everywhere. So, what? How does that qualify you for reparations? 
Well, when you guys come in from high cholesterol from eating all the chitlins and taco salad, we, we come and give, give you niggas the medicine. <laughs> Nigga, your, your Nigerian accent is horrible. <laughs> you, keep, you keep flipping out of accents. Uh, Nigga, you are not Nigerian. <laughs> You're a different kind of tether. Yes. What, what, where, where are you from for real? You're a different kind of tether. I, I, I was born in the States. Well, yeah. I, I'm hearing my mom's Caribbean. From, my, mom's from, my mom's from Algeria. Uh, no, no, nigga. I think you're Caribbean. You're Caribbean trying to sound, <laughs> sound Nigerian. Because I can hear musk flakes <laughs> dropping from under your arms right now. Uh, I can hear it. All right, now get your ass off here and get you some root work. All right. That's a Caribbean tether. All right. There's a certain tinge of must that I can tell. Hello? All right. What's up, Joe? Joe? Joe, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Tariq? I'm good. What's on your mind? I'm just enjoying the show, brother. All right. What you think about Ebony uh, Williams with that stuff, man? The crazy talk. She, she flipping the script. Who? Ebony Williams. Oh, okay. Um, I I don't know too much about it, but anyway, right. My nigga just hate when people just kind of call up with random topics, trying to change the topic about something else. I don't. All right, let's get um, let's get um, Frank. Let's get Frank in here. All right, let's get Mister Frank. Yeah, what's going on? What's up, Frank? How are you, brother? Yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'll be following you for a minute, man. I was just curious, like, so my thing is, just, like, I went to Howard University. You know, I got a good job outside of that, and I've been making good money. Uh, my parents are half. Well, my mother is from the states. She's African American, FBA. My dad is Caribbean. But my question is, is like, at what point is the unity? Is the unity of black people that are FBA and non FBA? Like, what is the what is required for us to kind of come together to some degree? We don't have we don't have to do no 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 let's let's get something straight. Yeah. Our lineage is our lineage. Let's get off this shit. Every time we start talking about our lineage, then there's all these weird kumbaya requirements. Well we do we we're gonna get together and love each other. They don't give they ain't got no, 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 I'm not talking lineage. I'm not talking about no kumbaya shit. I understand. I was okay, talking okay, politically okay. though. I got it, I got it. But no no but let's just get it clear. Let's get it clear. We don't have to do shit, all right? Our lineage is our lineage, all right? It, it, when it comes to talking about foundational Black American lineage, it always goes into, well, as FBAs and um, Caribbeans and other peoples, what is it going to take for us to get together and join hands? And uh, we, we don't have to do none of that. If we do, cool. If we don't, cool. That doesn't change our lineage. All right, our lineage is our lineage. Our lineage is foundational Black American slash freedmen slash descendants of slaves slash Native Black Americans. That is our lineage, no matter what. So people coming in whining, our lineage is still our lineage. People trolling, oh, you niggas are divisive. Yep, but our lineage is still our lineage. You niggas hit us. Our lineage is still our lineage. All right? No matter the whining don't stop that. The trolling don't stop that. The trying to criminalize us. You niggas, you're a, you're a hit group. That don't change the lineage. Just because you done made up some group in your mind, that doesn't change our lineage. We are a lineage of foundational Black Americans self-identified our lineage instead of letting other people name us like we're cattle. We're saying what the name is. They can't do anything about that because it's called codification. You think? When I was over in Easter Island and a lot of these places that were colonized, and I take my hat off to some of the people, even though they're colonized, a lot of them will be on code, the indigenous people will be on code with each other and they will still maintain their indigenous names. Like I was in Easter Island. The Easter Island is in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I was having a conversation with uh, a young lady at 
one of the waitresses at a restaurant or something, and we're just kind of having small talk. And I, I, um, I think we're asking about directions and some of the tourist sites or whatever. And I think I said something like, um, what's on the other side of Easter Island? And she politely corrected me and, and then continued to, to speak. I said, um, what's on the other side of Easter Island? She's like, um, you mean Rapa Nui? But yeah, over there they have such and such, because the original name is Rapa Nui. That's the original name of Easter Island. And if there's an indig indigenous person there, if you refer to it as Easter Island, a lot of times they'll correct you in a, in a polite way. And I'm not mad at them. Even though they've been colonized, they are still on code with each other. They know what the deal is. So yeah, the white people and the colonizers use the term Easter Island, but among themselves, and when you speak to them, they still want the respect of their indigenous self-identified language. It's Rapa Nui. You see. So we got to have that same kind of vibe when people want to try to name us and designate us all the time. No, 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 no. We ain't doing all that. We're a foundational black American. That's why when people are always trying to do these little DNA tests and all of these DNA tests do the same thing. They, they trace you back to some well, tribe and they you know, watch the wording for some of these tests. Cause you do these tests. They always say the same thing. Well, you share the same DNA with um, some Yoruba people. You share some of the same DNA with some of the Yoruba and some of the Igbo tribe, they, they say the same shit. You dig? And watch the wording. You share the same DNA. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that you were even a part of the tribe. A lot of people share DNA. You dig? That doesn't mean you were part of that damn tribe. So watch the words. Watch the language they use. Because, again... When they try to trace you back to a certain country over in Africa, remember, those countries are relatively new. So the land boundaries aren't even the same as they were a couple of hundred years ago. It's a completely different land, completely different people. You understand? The people in Africa were moved and ran all over the place over there within the last few hundred years. They don't really have no strong roots in these countries, family. Do y'all understand that? I'm not saying that to denigrate our brothers and sisters from the motherland. Uh, we got love, but let's be real. Some of us have been over there. Y'all don't have the deep roots that people try to pretend over here that they do. You just don't. Because people have been run around over there, remixed and flipped and sent to other places, and they abandon one place and go to another because the, the Arab colonizers were over there before the European colonizers. So... The, the, it's been stirred up over there like crazy. But um, e -E -E, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm just wondering why we don't deserve reparation. Because uh, what, what are you going to get? You got to go to the British government for reparations. Why don't you go to Britain? Well, sir, we've been here for, for years, sir. We've, we've done more work than you niggas. You guys bring drugs to the hoods. You killed niggas. I can't even have fun in a club. I get mugged. So what? What, what, what can I do? What, what can I do to have fun in the club? Well, what you do is roll the windows down from your Uber to let the must out. That's what you can do, and that'll save a lot of lives because that must is killing niggas. All right, let's get some more people in here. All right, let's get um. Okay, let's get um. Uh, Fuad, I think that's his name. Fuad, I think that's his name. Fuad, hop on. Turn your microphone on, Fuad. If you can, that'll be great. And then we'll get... Um... What's up, Tariq? Uh, this is Fuad. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Fuad. Now, what part of the Middle East are you from? Uh, so I'm actually here from the States. Um, I'm what you would consider a tether. I, I know that, but, but what part of the <laughs> Middle East? From? What part are you from? Which part? So I'm not from the Middle East. I'm actually from Africa. Uh, oh, Somali? Somali. There yep. you go. There you go, my man. Uh, Somali, Somali people got a lot of bad rep, uh, especially on uh, 
uh, the spaces here because uh, I'd be hearing, I, I, I listen in and it's terrible. Uh, I will say. Uh, now, why do you think that is? Uh, there, there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, uh, just like bad mouthing the black Americans in this country, which is kind of sad. And honestly, a lot of it I'm surprised by. Um, there is um, like stereotype, stereotypical issues within Somalia uh, with the uh, some of the people that are what what you would call uh, Jarer is what you would call, but it's called it's, it's Jarer. And, uh, yeah, well, they but, call they call us that, you know. Yeah, yeah and they, they they say the same thing to the Africans there. So I mean, it's right. not just the, the black Americans; it's just a, it's a certain look of black people that they would just consider that too. And they do consider themselves um, to be more Arab or whatever. But a lot of that is bullshit. Yep. I mean, Somali people yep. are, are ethnically Africans. They're black people. Um, most of that stuff is just brainwashed uh, from right. colonial times. And, yeah, there's, there's a lot of BS in that mix. Yeah, they they um, think they're I, Arabs. They think that they're Arabs. A lot of them East Africans um that fresh and fit they 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 think that they're like a dark version of the white arabs so yes yeah, a lot of stuff that they bring and we start checking their asses and then they want to cry oh y'all divisive because we ain't letting them bring their um wannabe arab arrogance to try to undermine us but go ahead super 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 arrogant uh but yeah. i i do have uh i i i mean i i do have a few things to say uh, one yeah. towards the topic, uh, there's a new um, video that was trending on Twitter that I saw recently, and uh, it's a brother that's in New York, and he was walking by filming, and he had saw a building where there was uh, a few people coming out of, and they were housing migrants, and then this one dude that looked like he was uh, from Africa, um, originally, he looked like an African dude, and it looked like he was uh, whitening himself up, so he definitely looked like a uh, uh, what you would call a sambo, I guess. Uh, um, and you know, he's telling him like, um, what, don't record. He's he's making demands in public. And this guy is a free citizen. You know, he's got the right to record. And I think he's a native uh, New Yorker. And mm. you know, and he's 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 over here making orders. And then there's another. It's 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 all over Twitter. It's it's kind of hilarious. Uh, but you it goes back to your point as to non uh black americans or uh, non fbas just kind of uh you know uh not prioritizing you know Im immigrants and um things of that nature uh but you know i i i do um i i agree with a lot of the points that you make but there are certain things i don't agree with um like what like what what don't you agree with well, one thing I don't agree with, there's a generalization that you do throw out there that I don't agree with. I think there's a lot of good people uh, that are not FBA for, for one. And I say that all the time. Uh, I, I say do. all the time people, all the time. So I don't generalize. Yeah. Come on. No, I, I do hear it, but some of it, uh, it's, 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 there's a lot of, um, I mean, you'll, you'll throw a lot of facts out there and then you'll, there's a spin that you throw in there. It's kind of, it's a narrative of yours. Uh, like what? That like what? I agree with. Uh, uh, for one example, is uh, uh, the fleeing mentality. Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of people fled, but there's the, the there's a reason as to why they fled, and there the, you got to kind of put some context into, into uh, no, why they fled. No, 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 because there's yeah. a reason why we deal with white supremacy, and we get tethers come over here all the time talking about ain't no white supremacy. They got a million. They try to shame us for saying, hey, man, a lot of shit is because of systematic white supremacy we got to deal with over here. We got to do a lot of fighting. And the tethers come over here after the plate has been made talking about ain't no white supremacy. There's a lot of opportunity. You niggas are just lazy. They don't want to hear no excuse or nothing as to why they got here because of us fighting for them. They don't want to hear that. They no, want to just that, talk about what white people are and all of that shit. But when niggas are fleeing, now we got to be sympathetic to why they packed up some bologna sandwiches with some injera bread and, and ran to the first thing <laughs> floating. All right. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, I agree with you, but the thing is, uh, the, the reality in America is when you look at uh, black people who are in position of power, it's majority FBA people. And it's just, it's difficult to pass a legislation, obviously, in a system of white supremacy that's going to prioritize black Americans or just black people in general. It doesn't even have to be um, even black immigrants. I mean, there's no such thing as there's no such legislation that really prioritize them in most communities. The other thing, too, um, I do disagree with and I wanted to bring up was there's a group of people in South uh, Carolina. Um, I think it's South Carolina. And their their name is uh, they, they connect with uh, an African tribe. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's Yoruba, Yoruba, Yoruba something like that. And uh, they're what you would consider FBA. Uh, they're native to South Carolina, and they have strong ties to Africa, and they express their African um, uh, traditions. They even have African communities that are, uh, or uh, black communities in South Carolina that are self-sustaining, and it's outside of white society. Um, you talking, talking about the Gullah Geechis? Uh, no, I think it's Yoruba, something like that, Yoruba tribe. I might be butchering the name, but uh, it just goes to show that, I mean, those are uh, black people from America that, you know, kept their roots, kept their um, uh, traditions, um, and still have a deep connection with Africa. Um, so, I mean, th um, with those people, um, th there, there's a strong connection is what I'm saying. And I'm not saying, you know, everybody has to go back to Africa. Africa's got a lot of problems. And the reality is most people should, I mean, most Africans and most, most black people anywhere should be for reparations for black Americans because okay. even okay. if you don't... Well, let's, slow down, even, let's, slow down, let's, slow, let's slow down for a minute. Let's go back and you said that group over in South Carolina have this strong connection to Africa. Okay, there's a lot of black people here who still have some strong African connections and all of that. Here's the thing, brother. What African country is welcoming, welcoming us over there with open arms without red tape? Where, um, where can we get that? Where can we get that connection honored in Africa? Where the, the, the that Yoruba tribe or the Yoruba, whoever you said that's over there in South Carolina, what African country is offering them dual citizenship with no red tape? I'll, I'll, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I'm, I'm Somali. No, uh, the answer is no. No, 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 no. Here's the point I was going to make. It's not easy to do. Nobody can really just go. I can't go to certain parts, some countries in Africa and get. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I went to Africa for the first time in February and went to Somalia. And a lot of the stuff you say, you know, I will I will give you your your points on. We got a lot of issues there's there uh the standard of living there is very low compared to most uh countries outside of uh africa what's that what does that have to do with offering well, so the, the point the point i was making here is i'm even me myself native somali i i go back to somalia I can't even get uh, citizenship. I'm, I'm right. having issues trying to that get means citizenship. They're off, code with it. They, they're off code with everybody, but we're yeah. supposed to be on code with all of them. No, nah, no, nah, we're yeah. all right. So, so the, the point, no, nah, but you're missing the point here. No, not really. Uh, Go. No, the, the, yeah, the, the point I'm making here, there's issues all around. It's not, nobody, nobody can really go back and just get, uh, things handed to them in Africa that easy. They and get shit as you said, you gotta, huh? They can come over here and get shit handed to them thanks to Foundation of Black Americans fighting to make it happen. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, but the reality is, Africa has a lot of issues. And you know, you you you'll you'll what you do is you you'll throw the facts out there, and nobody can argue the facts. The facts are the facts. But you got to spin. You you throw a spin. And What's the uh, you, they got issues. We got issues. We got issues too. What issues yeah. do Africa have that we don't have? No, it's just some of the spin narratives that you throw out there of like uh, 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 the the fleeing the uh, yeah. a lot. You, yeah. you can't yeah, just called, generalize when, that. You, when you no, dude, dude. If you and eighty niggas hop on an inner tube and hop in the Atlantic Ocean, that's fleeing. 
if you you get yourself in a if you get in a suitcase and mail yourself to Italy, that's fleeing. You got people literally doing that. There's videos of people doing that. That that's called fleeing. There's ships pulling up to ports in West Africa, and dudes are tripping over themselves jumping on that ship. Well, so here's the thing. First of all, with, uh, just in real life, just in real life, if somebody fleeing. robs you, right? So check this That's out. If somebody fleeing. robs you, if right. somebody robs you in real life, right? You you're gonna go back to where the robber took your belongings. To, if they took it home with them or whatever, you're gonna go back over there and try to claim it. No, no, well, because it could be strategic. Uh, if you think about no, it, it could be strategic. No, 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 no. no, most, no the, most of Western no, Europe, no, no, and no, America, no, no, robbed no. most of these countries. Y'all they ain't going to food. Arab countries. You're not going to Arab countries. Y'all coming here where the foundation of Black Americans are fighting the dominant society. The Arabs over there in West um, East Africa, they did a lot of decimating and, and destroying things. Y'all know better than to go over there raising hell because we ain't over there. Y'all not running over wait there in the Arab countries. The Arabs, the, well, okay, you can't they're, compare they're the Arabs. They're, they're, you can't compare they're, the Arabs to colonialism. That's dude. totally. You can't compare. That's not even the same type of robbery. Oh, that is not the same type about? of robbery. The Arabs were the first colonizers over there in West and in East Africa. The Arabs were over there calling. That's why people uh, speak Arabic and they uh, practice Islam over there in a lot of those mm-hmm. countries. The Arab colonizers not the same were the type of colonization. First of all, the the most recent colonization were Europeans in uh, what, West, the what, Western what you, world mainly. What that was the most dude over there. In East, dude, I've been over there, dude. You had people like Tipu Tip over there in Zanzibar had the slave trade popping over there in East Africa. Don't play that game. Those okay, Arabs. What year, what year is that? What year? How far dude, back are you going? Hundreds. Huh? We're talking about in the eighteen hundreds. They had that popping over there. Okay, but colonialism was more recent in Africa. All right, dude, y'all been so, colonized so, over and over again. That, you know that, no, no, that trauma is more recent. And that tr- that looting is uh, can there are people still alive that were under colonialism? You are talking about eighteen hundreds? That's you know, I mean, eventually people will recover. So that's not as much. That's not as damning. Y'all been getting colonized and recolonized by by different entities, dude. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, don't try to remix your history, brother. Come nah, on, man. man. You're throwing a spin here, man. So I'm not. But, what, yeah. what am What am I spinning, sir? What am I spinning? Well, very simple. Uh, in this in this matter here, uh, the uh, the Arabs were much later uh, uh, than uh, colonialism. Colonialism is much uh, was much sooner, and we've been robbed, along with most of the other countries, just out, not even in Africa, outside of Africa. The other thing too, this country is uh, having lots of issues. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the border is just wide open. We're letting everyone in. I don't agree with that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've been here most of my life. Uh, I came here as a kid, and, you know, in Somalia, there was a civil war in the 90s that had just uh, had everybody uh, leaving. Most of the population had le- a good amount of the population had left. Uh, some had stayed. Um, and, you know, I think th- uh, people should come in legally. There should be a legal system where people do come in legally. Um, and so, I mean, a lot of the issues with uh, uh, people fleeing, that's really just the government, the corrupt government that's in power oh. right now, letting everybody the in. Gov- okay, it's the government, right? The, the yeah. U.S. government I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah. And again, Tariq, I just want to, I just want to end with this po- point here. Government. Major point. Most, okay. uh, most <laughs> Uh, black people in America that are in power are FBA. And uh, the ones that are uh, holding back uh, uh, reparations along with other benefits for black people are people who are FBA, who are poli- in political listen, power. Listen, to do, listen to me. Listen to, 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 make... listen to me. Listen, Go ahead. Listen, 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 listen. The black people, there's no black person in a position of power. All right, there's not one black person. No. Who do you think is in a position of power? What no, black person do you I, think is in a power? I agree. There, there's, uh, there's, hidden hand, there's a hidden hand in play here. I agree. Listen, listen. But there, let me, in, term, on, listen in me. terms of title, there, there are more black oh. Americans, FBA, who are uh, in position of power more than any 
uh, immigrant what group. What power are they? What, who? Who? They, what power? What power? Like in, in the political world, there are more, I can guarantee you there are more congressmen and women that are foundational black Americans. They're not. They, and, they, just, they kind of have to do what people tell them. I want you to understand this, I, the I, power. Go ahead. The, listen, listen to me. I want you to understand foundational black American culture. Our power is not who's in political office. Our power as foundational black Americans has always, always, always been the grassroots. And the grassroots power comes from us being on code. That's where I, that's what gets shit done. That has always got things done in America. The black grassroots, the black political class, they follow our suit. You understand? Okay. The white people make you think that they put a couple of black leaders who influenced everybody to do the right thing. No. Every good movement that we got shit done, it started with the streets, the grassroots, all of it. The civil rights movement, that was really fueled by what was happening in the streets. They want you to believe that it was a bunch of Negroes getting beat up by being nonviolent is what made them change the civil rights laws. That wasn't it. It was the grassroots who's out there whooping ass for real, for real. I agree. That's what got changed. It's all, it's us, the, the streets, the grassroots, the masses being on code with each other. That's where the strength is. And I want y'all over there in those African countries to understand, damn the government. It's y'all getting on code with each other because y'all got all those tribal differences. You can't get on code like you need to. And that's been your weakness. So y'all have to start remixing the way you think as far as these tribalistic differences that y'all hold on to there. And then you bring that over here. And this is why we delineate from that, because we don't want that tribal stuff over here. Yeah. We only want people around us who's going to be on code. Yeah. When we're fighting against the white supremacists, we don't want some flea and tether to come over here and tell us that racism ain't so bad because they can get a job. That's some shit that undermines. Oh, it is us. a spin. We understand. There, there's a spin. We. There, there's the spin. You, you know, that's not a spin, okay, dude. So I'm saying some real shit. No, right now. I, I agree with that. Y'all do that, dude. Said, but then here comes the spin. No, it, it sounds no, 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 because you need to hear it. It sounds bad, but y'all do that type of shit. Okay, y'all okay, do brother, that. Listen, listen. I, I totally no, 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 agree with you. I totally agree with you for delineation. All right, okay. and I support it. I support it. And I think all right, thing, okay, you, okay, because okay, because okay, it said brother, want, okay, all right. He he's one of these people who just want to keep explaining. It. Thank you so much. I understand, but there ain't no goddamn buts. It's time to listen because. Brother, you came from a fleeing culture, all right? See, when, when people flee, they don't want to hear that shit. You want to talk around like you didn't flee. You flee, all y'all fled, my nigga. All right, let's keep it a buck. I don't want to hear flee explaining. Let's let's get real tonight. You fled. That's okay. That's that's what happens. Y'all fled. When you flee, you this time to shut the fuck up because I ain't trying to hear what you got to say, really as far as how to get power strategically and your ass then fled. See, that's the thing with the tethers. And I'm not saying you're a tether, brother, because I think you were very respectful in the conversation, but I'm just giving you some some hardcore game here that you need to hear because y'all want people to sit here and play games with you. When you flee, y'all don't bring y'all ass around us talking that bullshit because that's the problem. Niggas be fleeing. You were off code back home. Your family was off code. Then you bring that off code behavior over here, and then you come here and get you a couple of little jobs, and then start telling us how racism ain't so bad, and you niggas just need to work hard. How come you niggas don't have two jobs like me? And then, then, then stop it. And we're saying, hey man, cut that nonsense out because it's weak and it undermines us. Instead of us. Or you getting on code with us because we know what the problem is. The problem is systematic white supremacy. And the reason why any black person can get a job is because enough of us, foundational black Americans, can get on code to kind of move the legislation from a grassroots level. We get on code and we let them know, hey, man, things are going to have to be a little bit different. You see? And they know that us being codified, we can get things moving and shaking. There's a reason why they keep flooding our communities with immigrants and tethers. 
they know that these people are off code and these people can't wait to kiss a white ass and undermine us. They know. That's why they are opening the floodgates directly into these black neighborhoods. They know this off code floodgate of tethers is going to undermine us. They know this. You understand? And we're saying, no, we're getting more codified. We're delineating. We're checking everybody's hairline because we're not going to let people come over here and start sneaking among us, trying to blend in so that they can undermine us the way they undermine people back in their homeland. That's the reality, dude. That's the long and short of it. Y'all, we're not letting y'all come among us. Hey, let's all do We're all black. There's a black tribe of niggas in South Carolina who likes Africa. How come we can't be like those niggas? No. Because they, they can't go to Africa. And when we ask how come they can't go, well, I can't even go. If I go back home, they're going to be mean to me. Uh, all right, then. Stop selling us Wakanda, then. Damn. Please, y'all, stop trying to sell us Wakanda. Yeah, y'all keep proving our point. Y'all keep sitting up telling us how we need to. Uh, Africa is so popping, and yeah, this black person is um, uh, uh, paying homage to the African lineage and Africa this and Africa that. Uh, okay, well, damn it, what's Africa doing for that person? Oh, nothing. Africa's too fucked up. Oh, all right then. That's the point. That's the point. See, what people want, they want foundational black Americans to sit here propping up the Wakanda ideology of Africa. They only want us to do that. They want us sitting up here just putting Africa on a pedestal because we, we've been the only ones doing that. We've been the ones kind of speaking highly and saying, hey, let's not let y'all denigrate Africa the way, you know, the, the white media has been denigrating it. No, let's, let's, you know, we can promote the positives. You know, I've done that. That's why people be like, you did heat in colors. How come you're mean to us? I'm not mean, but let, we're going to keep it a buck. We have been propping you guys up more than you have. You know, we try to prop up black people globally and find the positives so that people can all be on the same page. But when there's a problem coming from a certain sector that ain't nobody trying to rectify, that needs to be pointed out. And y'all ain't trying to get rid of your tribal bullshit. And y'all want to sit here and say, the government. The government is you. See, y'all over in Africa, man, they really got to start learning in the Caribbean too. They got to really start learning the power of being on code with each other. You dig? It's a real interesting dynamic. Right, let's get some more people in here because we're in here heavy tonight. Let's get um, American Unique. American Unique. Let's get American Unique in here. All right. What's up, American Unique? Oh, what happened to you, American Unique? Well, let's get you back and let's get um, Mohawa, whatever your name is. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's going on? I'm good, man. Where, where, where you from? What's your how to pronounce your name, bro? I'm Rewa. All right, and where you from? Zimbabwe. All right, shout out to Zimbabwe. I've been out there to Harare. I think I pronounced that right, and um, um, I enjoyed the people out there. So, what's on your mind? Ah, uh, Joe, I was just listening to you when you were talking about African stuff, right? It sounds like it yeah. sounds like there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation, right? Because um, like what? Uh, the narrative that you're putting across is uh, Africa is really bad, but Africa is 54 countries, not one country, 54 countries. That means... Let's slow down. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's slow down. You said the narrative that I'm putting out is that Africa is bad. Yes. The caller, the caller put out the narrative that Africa is bad. I didn't say anything that Africa was bad. When you talk to the people from there, they say how bad it is. The last caller I had was talking about how fucked up he said it, but go ahead. His country is fucked up, not every country. I come from yeah. Arara. You said you've been there before. Did you see how yep. beautiful it is out there? It is. Did you see it's how nice the house is? Even the best cars you can ever see in Hollywood, they are driven in Harare right now as I speak. 
right? Because so you, it doesn't mean out of all the countries, 54, everything is fucked up. There are countries that are fucked up, I understand, because there were civil war, but there are countries that are actually doing well, right? So because of the narrative whereby they just uh, group everybody, Africa, 54 countries, into one and say, if one place is bad, everything is bad. No, if you go to South Africa, if I can tell you, my brother, I can direct you to YouTube. There are very, too many, um, so many uh, black Americans that are settling in South Africa, Johannesburg. And I can tell you countries that are giving citizenship to um, black Americans right now. If you talk well, about who? Ghana, I can give who? you the list. Well, well, Ghana. Without, no, no, no. Okay, no, okay, you can, you, can, you can disagree all you want, but I'm going to direct you to but check no, it out. No, 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 Ghana no, no, is giving no, no, citizenship. No. You, uh, let's, let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. Because the y'all start talking fast, let's slow it down. Ghana ain't giving dual citizenship. See, y'all do this game. It, it, no. is, it is. If you want to no, take your passport, right? no, a right to abode, they have something called a right to abode, and there's a lot of red tape. And then there's black people moving over there, and they're getting their property taken. They're getting their homes and property taken in many instances. It's not what you make it seem like. No. They have a right to abode. Uh, uh, let me black. explain first. Then instead, of hold on. No, I ain't hear no. This don't. I'm gonna explain too. And and certain countries over there, you gotta have a big bag of money. You gotta drop off in order to get dual citizenship. So that's not real dual citizenship. If you gotta have a big bag of money to drop off, but go ahead. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, let me finish up. Then you can cut me off. Whatever you wanna do. All right. Uh, Ghana is giving citizenship. Eritrea is giving citizenship, Sierra Leone is giving citizenship, and Gab Gabon is giving citizenship. No, they're not, unless you have a bag of money. You got to drop off forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Tell all of it, bro. Don't just sit here and say that and don't put it in context. Where the hell do you go and get an easy citizenship? You tell me. Here! No Here. way, man. Do you know what? how immigrants go through to get the papers? Here. Do you know how they go through? No, you don't know, man. You don't know. I do know. What you mean I don't know, dude? You got people just walking the hell over here and getting papered up without nothing. They come over here with flies in their pocket, and they're getting hotels and all types of prioritization, dude. What are you talking about? They're getting free citizenship here in America. That's why we have a problem with that. Can I explain? Then you can cut me off, right? Let me explain. I, I know you got your own narrative, but I'm going to explain you as an African. I'm just going to give you but, information. But don't, but, but don't sit here and say all of these countries got all this dual citizenship and you leaving out the fact that you got to have about fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 at least. No, no, no. no. Let, me, that let, me explain. Don't, let me explain to you. Wait, right. Deca, let me explain fully. You're cutting me off so that you, you don't get my whole sentence or my whole, you just cut me off. Let me just explain. Don't, truth. don't tell a half truth, though. You better put it all in context, brother. Put everything in context, but go ahead. That's what I'm trying to do, but do you not give me the time to do it? Right? Go ahead. Your narrative, your narrative is a kind of half bagged. It's not full bagged, your, your narrative. You, you're just generalizing everything. I'm just telling you to get, I have American citizenship, I have Canadian citizenship. To get it is hard. Don't think that I got it for free. I stayed eight years in the States before I got my citizenship. You didn't have to come dump off fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 You think when I came to the States, what I was I doing? I was a student. My parents were paying my tuition fee. You didn't have to drop off fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 is my point, sir. How much is the education in America, the tuition fee for your undergrad? I'm asking you right now. How much is it? Dude, for no, an no, no, international no, no, student. For international. Talking, oh, no, we're talking apples and oranges, sir. No, no, no. You came over here with two nickels in your pocket because foundational black Americans created a lane for you to come over here and get that. You didn't. You can come over here with no money down and come up. We can't do the same over there. We got to have a big bag. Let me property. tell you, the people who are coming with no money are the, are the Spanish South America that are going through the border. We flew. I flew to America. I didn't come through the border walking. There was no caravan that coming from Africa. So your narrative is kind of biased. South America, the Spanish people. Biased. You didn't have. You didn't have a whole bunch of money. You can y'all come over on student visas. You don't have to have a lot of. Yeah, money. but I'm paying three times as much as American student. That means it's uh, it's it's expensive. My Dude. tuition fee was three times as much as a local student. Dude, they got DACA programs that African immigrants can get a part of too. 
There's all types of other immigrant programs. Your, 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 your narrative, you might go with that narrative, but the truth is remaining the truth. I'm just letting you know that. No, 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 don't act like there's no programs over here that will underwrite whatever college tuition you have. Y'all get up in these HBCUs over at Howard University and in all these places that were designed. No, no, no. no. Oh, don't you play that if game. You, if oh, you... don't you play Don Umbutu. You're not going to lie. You're not going to lie. Y'all African immigrants are all up getting scholarships at these HBCUs. Y'all get all types of money that was supposed to be for us. And there's all types of money. Y'all pop over. Hey, I'm a nigga too. And y'all get them scholarships. Y'all get Juneteenth money. Y'all get all types of money. Don't act like y'all just came over here and nothing got popping for you. And if you let me money. speak, then uh, you can look, get what I'm trying to say. But if you cut me off, you are lying. Yes, because you, you, ain't, you, you ain't about to Joel off explain. You're not going to Joel off explain. You're going to tell the truth here tonight, brother. Go ahead. Let me speak. If you keep mentioning me, how am I going to speak? Umbutu starts. You're the one who's to interject me. I want to speak and let you know the truth that but, but I have today. about hey. me, myself, because you asked me about me. If you Google Harvard, you will see African students. They are getting there with H HBCU. They are getting their free money. They pay. Maniga, they pay. <laughs> Most of the people who come from Africa, their parents have money to pay for the tuition fee. The people who don't have money are coming from South America, Mexico, uh, whatever down there. All the South America are com they're coming in caravan. Africans, they're educated and they come with their money. Okay. You understand? Okay. Well, so you stop many, lying to people okay. about this bullshit. That okay. so, so how, why are there so many Africans over here, if there's so much money, why are there just thousands of Africans over here driving Uber? Africa. I don't, what do you mean? Well, the people I, who don't have money are, this, uh, are, the, are the Latinos. They're coming on the caravan no. and pushing through the border. African they can money those guys. African school. Uh, Africa, they fly to America. They yeah. don't come with a the border. They don't yeah. walk into America border. They're flying and getting Uber drives. If you got so much money, why are there thousands of African immigrants driving Uber and working minimum wage over here? I know you have a bias over Africans. It's all right. Spanish, that's you can't see them. Yet. No, 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 no. That's a legitimate question. You're not all coming over here papered up. A lot of you are coming over here working at the Waffle House, working at Walmart, driving Uber. Where's all this money if you're talking about all this money? Where, where, where's, the, where's the money? Babatunde? Hello? Okay, I don't, I don't know something. I, th I think he dropped his phone off into some injera bread. I don't know what. And you buy stop, stop meeting me, then we can have a conversation. Okay. We can have I, back and forth. You don't have to I mute me. Mute, I didn't mute you that time. All right, cool. All right, cool. Me. Let so, me so tell how, you something. While these, just, while these African immigrants yeah. coming over working. So why you don't talk about the Latinos that are coming through the borders working? No, 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 no. We don't deflect. Don't deflect. No, I'm not deflecting. Both you seem well, to be only Africans, but I'm well, just letting you know. You said y'all have money, y'all come over here and y'all already have money, then why y'all over here driving Uber and working minimum wage by the thousands? How you getting over here? You're not muted, dude. Now he, he playing games with his phone. He's not muted. Uh, come, come on, man, you're muting me. It says red, they actually indicate on the top, you're muted. Dude. So what are you talking about? So blind people that you're not reading me. Okay. Right. What I'm trying to tell you is, my brother, no matter how you hate about Africa, it's the richest country in terms of minerals. Where do you okay. think they get the minerals from? Okay. Then how come you're not over there using the minerals? Do you know what I do? Do you know my profession? Do you know no. where I am right now? Do you know? I'm not no. even in the States right now. I'm in Canada right now as I speak with you. But I listen okay. to you. Because and, I didn't like America, and I walked away from America. And, and okay, why are you not over there in Africa using all of those minerals that's in the billions? Why are you not over there getting all them diamonds and golds and all that? You're not muted. Go ahead. Don't act like you're muted. This dude is not muted. Now his phone. Now when you, you ask him, what, me, man. if I take a screenshot of the mute and then send it to your inbox, then you can see that you're muting me. 
People, people I want to pin it up on jump from there because you are lying that you're not meeting me. You're meeting me all the time when I want to say something because you want to talk over, like you know. I'll, Let me tell you, brother, but, you don't know much about Africa, and you okay. said you went to Africa and then you where, talk better about Africa. How, how is it possible? Not over there. Why are you not over there with all the gold and diamonds? I, I, fly, I fly to Africa every, every year. I fly. I fly. I got, I got three passports it's Zimbabwean, American, and Canadian. Then why how do you, you get it? Why How do you get Why are you no. leaving so much? Some of us we want to explore the world and see it. My no, parents are rich. No, no, My parents are very rich. So I, 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 not, you are the one who's you're not exploring. You're fleeing, sir. You're fleeing and babbling. Why are you not staying over there with all the diamonds and all of the rich eyes? It, oh, y'all telling us about all the rich eyes, but you're not over there with the rich eyes. You, you said initially you were in Harare. If you are really, really in Harare, that I means was. you're blind because if you have seen what is in Harare and what they drive and everything, you wouldn't be saying what you're saying right now. Oh, hold, hold on now, hold on. Been... Now. No, I've been over there. You got some people who are living good, but it, you know, every, it ain't everybody ain't balling out. Now let's not go there. Harare is nice, and you got some people who are living in nice homes. Some people driving nice cars, but everybody ain't balling out now. I guess I've been to some of the outskirts of Harare, and I've seen some huts and shit like that, and. You know, you got some some middle class, some ballers, some um, um, low income. So you got different types. Don't act like it's Wakanda, though. Let's not do that because I have been all over there. But I'm asking you, you're talking about all the riches and all of that. Why are you not over there utilizing all of the riches? And all you're doing is deflecting. You keep deflecting. You keep not. I'm not that. deflecting. What I wanted the narrative is for you to change and say they have good part about Africa. And then you can say some other even in America. I've been in the hoods before where people can't even walk in the streets because they're scared of getting killed. This where? debate, and I've seen people who can't even read where? in the states. We have who can't even write in the states. We have never where? gone to school. Where? Yeah, everywhere. In the states. Where? where? I, I lived in Philly, in my, my nigga. I'm going to let you know where I live now. I lived in Philadelphia. I lived in Baltimore. I lived in Charlotte. Uh -huh. I lived in ATL. I can tell you the place that I've been and the roads that I drove, my car, my nice vehicle that my parents bought me. So you are lying to people there. Whatever you are on, stop lying to people. America is not all what that too. No, no, there are no, people what also are suffering in America. Are you, are you trying to say that Atlanta and Philly was like some of those places in Africa? Is that what you're trying to say? What you trying to I'm say? Just letting, I'm just letting you know America is not all that. There are people who are suffering. They wish they were born somewhere else because they can't survive there. There are people who are what? homeless. So stop lying about America and talk better about Dude, if you don't stop, that's why you coming over here. If it's so bad, we, we're not complaining. We're not leaving. It's You're the one who came over here. So don't sit here and try to sell the Wakanda thing and you fled over here. You, you did flee. Why did you flee, sir? How did I flee? I didn't flee. What do you, you mean fleeing? Over there, I want to explore the world. It's just that you don't travel. People who travel want to travel and see other countries where they were not born doesn't mean they're fleeing. I'm not fleeing. Do you I ain't seeing, you ain't seeing, you fleeing. I, when I, I went am over, no, fleeing. When I, anyway. I went over there to see and then I brought my ass back home. You ain't leaving. You say you go over there once. You ain't going back over there. You done fled and you stayed over here. Nice and safe. Stop playing games, sir. All right. You are lying. I'm not fleeing from any, but I wish I would know you. I would take you to Africa and go to different places. Then you can come back in, in your space and say the truth. You, you ain't even trying to go to different places over there, sir. You done got the hell uh, up out of you. No, man. I fly there every year. Let me for my holiday. For what the Christmas I go. Listen, and over in Zimbabwe, you have some nice parts over there, but there's still some economic challenges over there because what about in the states what about in the states they, they, dude, let's keep it a buck they got all types of sanctions on them over there um in in zimbabwe that's why a lot of people in zimbabwe got to go down to south africa to get stuff popping let's be real a lot of my friends there in order to go get their pilot's license they had to go down to south africa um you can't wire money at certain places it's weird the economy the it's a it's a real interesting dynamic over there economically so don't act like it's popping
All right. And I love the people over there. They were very kind to me. But let's be real. It ain't popping like you're trying to make it seem like. A lot of them have to get the hell up out of there because of the economy is kind of shaky and shoddy over there. But go ahead. Whatever the narrative you have, man, I think it's fucked up. I'm not going to lie to you. What, it's because, not messed up, yeah, man. it's fucked up because you're trying to, uh, to to lie to people and make you follow you on a what did screwed I lie up about? narrative. So be what, honest, what man. Did, what the hell did I lie about? What Name one thing I lied about. Wherever you go in the world, there are always going to be good things and bad things. So you are only, no, you're only blowing up. What did I lie? What did I lie about? I didn't lie about anything. What did I say that was untrue on this phone? What is untrue? Because what is untrue is the narrative that Africa is fucked up. It's not fucked up, Africa. Africa is actually rising, actually. Because it was under colonialism. We kicked out the white men. Y'all didn't, dude. We kicked all the white men out of Africa. You, if you really read history, go on the history and read it. We had to fight wars for actually Y'all didn't out. kick the white people out. Ah, uh, my, my, my nigga, you don't read history, man. Read history, African history. Really? Y'all keep you, the white read African history. Really? You're talking about race. Damn history. I done been over there. White people over there living large. South Africa, they're living large. Nigeria, the white people there are living large. Zimbabwe, you want to keep it a buck? I saw white people over there living large. The East Indians living large. You want to you want to go there? You let's do it, bro. Let's do it. Come on now. That's, that's why I said I can't, I, I can't argue with somebody who doesn't know African that's history. If you know African up. history and you're following the trends that's that is going on, up. then we can argue. But if you're don't arguing on your own, don't, 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 don't you? Because y'all, you want to babble to get away from the truth. Who owns a lot of those businesses in Zimbabwe? Let's keep it a buck. Who owns a lot of those businesses in Harare downtown? Who owns those businesses? You don't know anything, man. Stop Who lying to these people. The you don't know anything. Food? I'm trying to talk to you in a conversation, but you, you're just who jumping over, over the place. Owns those the businesses. People who are fucking your country, America, is the Latinos, the oh, Spanish right. who are coming from the, through the border in millions. But you blame the African. Okay. I'm not going to let you babble because now, because he, he don't want to get real. All right. You want to talk about your homeland? Dude, I've been all over your homeland. I love the people of Zimbabwe, but when you go downtown Harare, the East Indians and Arabs own all the businesses there. Come on now. You want to talk about all those nice homes? Yeah, they're nice homes that the Indians and Arabs live in. Bruh. Come on now. And he knows where I'm about to go with it. See, a lot of folks, they try to talk crazy when you ain't been over there. I've been over there. You're not going to run that Wakanda game on me. Yeah, there's some nice homes out there. Arabs and Indians live in them. And they run all the businesses there. Yeah, let's say that. They love coming in with these half-truths. Oh, there's a bunch of countries who got... Do citizenship. Um, Senegal, Ghana, Sierra Leone. Yeah, if you drop a huge bag of money off to them. Well, citizenship is not easy. Yeah, nigga, it is easy when you bring your ass over here. You know, so you're, you're not going to run the Wakanda Khan game. All right? Y'all are off code, and then y'all want to come over here and then you want us to prop up Africa for you while you flee. And then you want to sell the Wakanda stuff about all the gold and the minerals and all that, but you ain't over there utilizing them. We ain't going for that no more. Y'all, please stop that. We are not going for the, there's diamonds all over the place and there's gold. and uh, They've been running that game since... Alfred Sam. That's the, the Alfred Sam scam that I call. And y'all go look up Alfred Sam. I, I talk about him all the time. He was one of the first people running that. There's diamonds everywhere scam. 
He went over there to Oklahoma telling black people, oh, when it rains over in Africa, man, there's diamonds in the streets. Man, y'all go over there. Ain't no racism. Um, the the land is beautiful. You can um, grow crops. Ain't no racism. And everybody's going to be one people. And black people went over there and got finessed. So it was a big-ass finesse. Um, to CD, hop on to CD. To CT. I think that's your name. Ma'am, you want to get on? To CD. Hi. Personally, Hello. Personally, yeah. Um, a quick contribution that I wanted to make um, was that when we look at uh, when we look at these the it the like the situation set up and how things are run in certain um countries or across the globe it is very important for us to understand uh the polit the social political or just like just uh glo yeah geopolitics and understanding a clear understanding of geopolitics is very important. We do have a lot of um, an abundance of our minerals in Africa, and yes, I do agree with you that the bulk of those of those minerals do not are not uh, benefiting Africans. But I don't think uh, when we are sitting here, we would honestly blame uh, maybe the black people or the native people of Africa for not um, for, 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 for their inability to access those uh, those minerals. I think we need to we need to um, look at uh, issues not from a single story uh, point of view. Part of the reason part of the reason why those Africans like myself and all other Africans who are listening here cannot access those minerals is not because they are dumb. It's not because they are not fighting to, to be able to access them. But there are so many, um, so many powers involved, uh, involved in that. And those powers do not end within the borders of African, uh, African countries. Uh, talking about Zimbabwe, for example, the players that are that control uh, the power that the the power that determines who owns what do not end within the borders of um, Limpopo, which is uh, which is the border between South Africa and Zimbabwe, or maybe in Chirundu, where we, where Zimbabwe borders with Zambia. It's it's a lot of players. The United States included. European nations included. So I do not think that we are just people who are on those space. I don't think we have the power or any influence on what happens. And it does not mean that Africans are not fighting to, 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 to have that power to, to, own, um, to own the means of production. They really, and if you if you look at most of the Africans that come to the United States, do come here as um, as students, and right. I do not think I will tell you I, I will tell you something. I have a friend who is from East Africa who was telling me that, you know what, I, I wish I could just, I I wish I could just um. Uh, finish my studies and maybe work in the United States and live in Africa if that was if that was possible. It doesn't mean that people flee Africa because they are it's stinging there. It's they come here because of that geopolitics that is being played not by you, not by me, not by anyone in on this space. There are powers beyond beyond uh, beyond our level that control they know better what's happening in those countries more than you do more than i do 
we may sit here and think that we know I may be holding um, a political position in maybe a, a political party that I, that I support in my country and think that I know exactly what my leader stands for. We don't know. There are only a few people, maybe 1% of the total global population, who know exactly what's going on in the world. Talk, of mineral, talk about minerals. You know what? You don't just mine those minerals and just go and sell them the way you would do, maybe the way you would sell maybe a, a, a pound of a kilo or a kilogram of, uh, of tilapia to say we will just sign a deal with company X. You know there are policies. You can't just, you can't just go, go mine your diamonds and... Um, bring them to a to to, to an, an open market a free market they are global no, no, are policies you so we need to understand global where, politics hold on, sit, sit. Hold on. where are you from hold on where are you from where uh, am where? i from yeah why why do you ask i need to know i was taught in the united okay, states then. that i have to ask why why do you want to know Okay, why is that a trick question? Because if somebody asks me where I'm from, okay, um, I am Detroit. I am from Southern Africa. As you can tell, I am from I'm I'm not a native speaker. I am from Southern Africa. Next question. And, and that right, and, okay, and and that right there is the problem, man. Because that's a shame. That comes from an inherent shame that you have of your own homeland, where you have to act act like it's a trick question. That wasn't even a trick question. And you got hostile just because somebody asked where you were from. If you ask me where I'm from, hell, I was born in Detroit. My raised down in Alabama. My family's from Alabama, North Carolina. Now, there's no shame at all. And that's the problem. Y'all have a hang up about your own lineage, man. That's a problem right there. You guys have a lot of hang ups about your lineage, where you came from, and there's a lot of shame there. And y'all come here and project a lot of that stuff onto us and then kind of wag your finger. You see, right there, that was very weird. That was a very simple question. It wasn't a trick question. You, you dig? So don't try to sell why, the Wakanda why, package. Why, why do no, you think no, 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 no. Don't sell the Wakanda package to us. And somebody asks you, hey, where are you from, by the way? Uh, why, why, nigga? Why, why are you talking about that? Then trauma. And then all of a sudden, you get a trauma flashback. Good Lord. Uh, man, okay, ma'am, go ahead, ma'am. I'm trying to. Why, I'm, why, I'm being why, why did why did why did it come up uh, come out as uh, as shame in your own in, in like yeah, because how 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 because that was a that was a simple question. I was just asking where you where were you from? I wanted to know first why. because of, I just I simply wanted to know why I'm not ashamed. I would be ashamed to consider myself as black American, right? Because I'm not. I am a proud African. There's nothing, there's nothing inferior about being African. If anyone has told, that. told you that Africans you're are inferior, that yourself. we are so proud. You're, 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 you are convincing yourself because you guys feel that way about yourselves. We, I've said that. We've never said that. In fact, foundational black Americans, we don't sit around denigrating you. You're the one going around talking about this. I, I should not have to feel inferior. You already feel inferior if you feel like you have to say that. We never said that about you. You go around projecting your own insecurities about yourselves onto us. Ma'am, what I asked you wasn't even a trick question. Let's, let's keep it above. That's where the problem is. Over there, every is such off code behavior where y'all have to leave, and then you go around trying to convince us that oh, it ain't so bad, it ain't so bad. And then somebody asks you a simple question, "Where you from?" And then all of a sudden, the female genital mutilation flashbacks start coming in. Yeah, y'all got hangups about where you from and where you fled from. Y'all had to flee from some of those places because a lot of it is just not popping. And then a lot of you guys try to run this game on us and finger wag us um, to try to have this fake kumbaya that y'all don't have.
Y'all don't have a camaraderie with us for the most part. Many of you don't. Uh, there's a lot of vitriol towards us. And we're saying we want you to leave your vitriolic mindsets back where you came from. Don't bring that over here to us. Don't bring your hangups over here to us. Don't bring your babbling and explaining over here to us. I'm, I'm landing a plane for you, ma'am. Because, see, I, I, when we ask a simple question and then all of a sudden you get a trauma flashback, see, that, that's something else. And we don't want to. We don't want to have to deal with your trauma. You dig? We don't want to have to deal with your trauma. We're not saying a bunch of weird stuff about y'all. You'll come in the room and somebody says, "Hey, what's up, guy?" Oh, what? What do you mean? What do you mean I'm stupid? What? You think I'm stupid? You niggas, I am not stupid. I am smart. I'm smart as you niggas. So what? What the fuck is wrong with this? It's that. You come in the room with your insecurities on your sleeve, and the minute somebody says anything to you, you're projecting stuff. But hey, brother, how you doing, man? Uh, what, what do you mean I'm an African booty scratcher? Don't call me that. What? What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Let, let's keep it real. We got a lot of people who are non-FBA in here. Let's keep it real. Y'all, uh, too many of you, y'all come from these traumatic ass backgrounds. And then you come over here and then there's a lot of jealousy. There's a lot of contempt that you try to project on us. When Chicago and Atlanta is just as bad. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. And because y'all had to flee from your homelands, there's a lot of insecurities there. You dig? And then y'all sit here and get upset when people point out that you had to flee. I don't like the word flee. You got to understand is the government. Uh, okay. Then y'all want to explain. Y'all want to do all this explaining. I don't want to hear all the explaining. We understand the political. We we look. Listen. Listen. You're not telling us anything new when you're telling us about colonial oppressive powers. Y'all think you're telling us something new. You're not. No, no, listen, listen, listen. We had to leave. We had to run from our homeland. You don't understand how oppression works. It's a government that is against us. They get all of our resources. We get colonized and there's war. And then, okay, all right, we, we know. That's why we have to leave. You don't understand. Yeah, we we yeah, we understand oppression. Yeah, we do understand. But the thing is, as foundational black Americans, we just choose not to flee. We choose to stand up and face the shit. You understand? And that's where a lot of your contempt comes from. Because we go through worse oppression. Don't tell me about the oppression over there. We're in the belly of the beast. We're living right under the most powerful military infrastructure on the planet, the United States government. We're living right in the belly of the damn beast. And we'll still stand up to the shit. We ain't fleeing. And that's where a lot of the vitriol comes from. You, you understand? Because we've gone through worse and we stood strong against it we didn't flee we said all right we're gonna deal with this shit and get what we need to get even though we're still under under the system of oppression we ain't gonna let them break us we're not gonna let them break our spirit we're not gonna let, let them break our resolve we're still gonna do what we do even in the face of oppression this is why people see us globally and they're inspired by that. There's an inspi inspiration and a contempt. You see, people are inspired. But then some people who have insecurities, there's the contempt. Like, oh, look at that nigga. That nigga. When everybody's trying to act like those FBA niggas. They're not even real Africans. You know, that type of shit. Yeah. Come on now. Let's get some more people in here. All right. I think this is from South Africa based on the name. All right. My South African cat, hop in, man. 
and it's all love. I, I hey, we don't have no problem with nobody in Africa. I'm I've been all over Zimbabwe. Much love to the people. They were very nice to me. All over South Africa, very nice to me. But come on, I don't don't sell a package like I ain't been over there and seen what was going down. Don't don't try to sell us a package now. What's up, man? Hop on. Um Moxie, whatever your name is, I can't pronounce your name, brother. Come on, man. It's simple. It's a policy. That's an African name. Gotta do the click. Okay, well shit. I ain't doing all that, but go ahead. <laughs> Uh, listen, I'm in Johannesburg, so it's sort of nine o'clock in the morning, and I'm actually laughing, um, you know, because some of the stuff is really funny. I mean, the last uh, speaker, you ask a simple question, where are you from? She says, Southern Africa. <laughs> That's right, actually right. funny. Where is that? She's from Zimbabwe. Uh, I can tell you that. The accent and, yeah. and, the, and the logic, if any. Um, <clears throat> She's from Zimbabwe, and as as you know, I think I mean I've listened to to to, to your spaces before, but you've been to South Africa. Uh, we now have people in South Africa who call themselves uh, South African Zimbabweans, uh, South African Congolese, and so forth, because everybody's just flocking in here. And <clears throat> when they come in here, we have the same problems as pro black Americans about people who come in and say, oh yeah, well, you lazy, you uneducated, um, you know, even when the stats are showing, you know, uh, something totally different. Um, but because South Africa is the last, uh, you know, African country um, to have the political freedom, if you want, I mean, it's only 30 years, give or take. Right. And now, Granted, South Africa has a, a better infrastructure, um, you know, compared to most of the uh, continent, or I mean, countries in the continent. It's not the best, but it's better than what what we have in the continent. And 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 with that, um, obviously, there's quite a lot of economic activities that are happening here. So South Africa is actually. We have we got ele elections coming up next year, and, and and the biggest issue right now that all the political parties are starting to um, you know, make noise about is illegals and illegal um, you know immigration and and so forth. Because um, for some reason, uh, probably that you facing there in the U.S., the borders are open and people are just flocking in. Um, I mean, we have we have folks who come as far as Pakistan, Bangladesh, have come in here and they've set themselves up um, with um, capital that we don't know where it comes from. And I say this because most uh, native South Africans don't have that kind of capital. Um, we only now starting to um, at least some people run their own businesses, um, whereas 30 years ago, uh, you, you wouldn't be allowed to even operate certain in certain sectors. And these are facts. Uh, this is not an excuse, um, yeah, Tariq. These are facts that the, the certain sectors that um, apartheid government said black people should not be allowed to manufacture X, Y, and Z. Just gonna give you an example, uh, Probably people don't know how South Africa is set up. We have what is called townships, um, which, right. is, which is basically, I mean, I haven't been to the US, so <laughs> I, I apologize for this. So I wouldn't even say they're like projects, but because. No, 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 no. They're not projects. They're not projects, they're right? Nothing, so, but these no, are. These no, are, no, no. We, these are nothing what, like, no, we Anything the equivalent of townships in America. Sure. Nothing. Yeah. Townships are shanty, a bunch of shanty towns, basically. Well, well, not necessarily, but yeah. Uh, but what happens? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're, they're shanty towns. Nah. Yeah, what do you mean? Not necessarily. No, we have shanty towns. We call them, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, informal settlements. So let, let it, let's put a little bit of respect to people's homes because it was apartheid special planning. And, oh, you know, right, there's a houses right, with, 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 with animations, right? Look, 
bro, bro, I didn't been over there to Mosh Pumalele. I didn't been over there. Those are shanty towns. Yeah, those are shanty not... towns. Yes, but Soweto right. is not a shanty town. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to okay, get at. Right. Okay. So okay. I'm, gi I'm giving you that context. Then listen, I live here. I know what a shanty town is. Mas Pumalele is a shanty town. Okay. Uh, outside the scat, right. uh, outside of Soweto, there are shanty towns. A lot of them. I'm, 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 I'm right. trying to build a picture here, right? And I'm getting to the point. And here's my point. These places that were called townships, which, you know, according to government, were, were black people supposed to leave, right? Because black people were not allowed to live with white people in the beautiful suburbs of Santin and wherever, right? So we come from a long way. So even those, those places were like townships, and I work in the townships, black people had to fend for themselves, i.e. corner shops, um, and other stuff, right? But black people are not allowed to manufacture what they are consuming. And that's a fact. Right. Now, what has happened is after 94, because even white people, that's how crazy apartheid was, was black people shouldn't go to white places in better commas, and white people shouldn't go to black play areas or townships. That's how crazy it was. But now after 94, uh, the Group of Serious Act, which was the law, apartheid law, was scrapped. What has happened is that big business, which is corporate South Africa, which is white and multinationals, moved into these townships to further extract and actually make more money out of black people. In other words, mm -hmm. we now have, South Africa's got shopping malls from here, I don't know to where and come back. Okay, we have more shopping malls in South Africa uh, than the continent combined. Fact, and most of these shopping malls now are moving into the townships, where people are, where the the buying power for fast moving consumer goods is found because it's human beings we have to eat, right? But here's right. a kick, Tarek. None of those malls. In fact, not even a percentage of those malls are developed by black people. Right. People who live in those areas. So what those malls have right. done, um, typically a, a, a simple shopping mall will come in when they develop and it will have anchor tenants already. These are big retailers. Okay. So number one, those big retailers that are coming in through that mall are also not owned by black people because they are certain um, put money aside, right? But we have from corrupt uh, government officials to God knows what. But long and short of it is that we've got all these malls and everybody, unfortunately, you know, people get excited. Oh, we've got a mall, so we don't have to take, um, you know, public transport to, to the nearest town um, for shopping. So all the shopping now is done in our neighborhood. But guess what? Right. All those shops and everything. So the point I'm making here is that. Okay, I, I got to land your plane because there's other folks calling in. But thank you so much, brother. It was going to take a minute to land his plane. But he had to land your plane for a minute, brother. But I got your point. I got your point. All right, let's get Eric. Eric, hop on. Hey, brother Tyreek. How you doing? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? I'm good, sir. I'm glad to see you um putting these people um through the ringer because these folks ought to be ashamed of themselves, man. That last person that, that just got up here a couple of um callers ago, um, when you asked her what she's from, and I get tired of you know certain Africans doing this shit, man. But when y'all go to the immigration office, y'all always give them you know the sad story about where y'all from. But when you, when it comes to foundational Black Americans, y'all want to just put us through the ringer like we don't know what's going on over here, man. So. I just want to really land my plane and just say to every um, African person who's on code, y'all need to start regulating these people when it comes to them just talking all, all type of crazy shit. So I just want to land my plane to just say, keep doing your thing, brother. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. But yeah, man, look, look, when people start talking about the government and whoop de whoop, oh, we cannot get it. You got to understand over here, it is oppressive. Look, dude, and, and look, look, when we say to them, how come y'all ain't really reaching out to try to assist us with anything? Because it's all about what we can do for them. 
if we ain't bending over and, and acting as damn red carpets for, for everybody over there, then we're divisive. See, there's this entitlement now that we're supposed to sit there and just keep propping y'all up and it's one-sided. We're supposed to ride for you and understand your plight and it's one-sided. And when we talk about some of the things we have to do to get certain laws passed, oh, you know, shut up, nigga. You leave the white people alone. It's that shut up and leave white people alone shit. And then when we say, hey, man, we, we're going to just delineate. Then y'all want to say it's divisive. But I don't want to hear about what y'all can't do because of the government. This is why I said earlier, our strength comes from the grassroots. What we're doing without the approval of the dominant society, what we do on our own. It starts with the grassroots. All of our movements, the grassroots got on code. We didn't have any tribal beefs and we start looking out for the best interests of the group. And then other people started to get on board. Some of our black professionals. I want y'all to understand Foundation of Black Americans. And I, I always point this out how we were not only instrumental in getting things popping here as far as just basic rights for black people within the law as we know it, but even the independence movements over in Africa, we were still under the thumb of oppression here, but we still mustered up the strength to reach out and assist brothers and sisters over there in the motherland. I always point out when the Italians were trying to invade Ethiopia, it was foundational black Americans lining up all around the country to assist. When the colonial powers were dominating the people in those colonized African nations, do y'all understand how many black lawyers over here were helping them navigating international law to get those colonial powers off of them? It was a lot of lawyers here, foundational black American lawyers that were stomping for them, providing legal advice and legal representation to a lot of those African nations trying to get their independence. People like um, Clarence Clyde Ferguson Jr., people like that. Look some of these people up. It was foundational Black American lawyers helping these African nations um, understand independent, I mean, international law to get their country set up and get the oppressive powers off their backs. That's why people like Malcolm was going over there to Africa and um, some of those African students who were coming here, like Obama's dad and all those people, and I talked about this before, that, again, that was a foundational Black American grassroots movement. When those students were coming over here, early 60s, because you didn't have the immigration thing popping like it was. They didn't really want Africans over here at all. It was the Black grassroots that was funding them, helping them to come over here and get an education. It was Black churches raising money to get Africans over here to get a goddamn education. They were staying with Black people. Who the hell you think they were staying with over here in the middle of Jim Crow? It was foundational Black American families bringing them in, letting them stay in our homes. Let niggas borrow deodorant and all that old shit. And you, you know what I'm saying? It was us doing all of that. Let's keep it. Who's giving the thumbs down? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is Giancarlo. Okay, this is uh, the Latino tether. I thought it was okay. I, I thought it was somebody significant. It's a nobody. Okay. I'm like, who's giving a thumbs down? It's a, it's a, a wannabe Anglo Latino tether. So, yeah, you don't count. Well, you, of course, you're going to get the thumbs down. But, yeah, and, and Giancarlo, even you. Um, when the Spanish were, were colonizing your countries down there in South America, y'all had to go run to the Haitians. Y'all had to go run to Dessaline for help. Y'all had to go to Dessaline and the Haitians to get the Spanish off your ass. All right. Anywho, let me see. <clears throat> got a lot. We got some people giving the thumbs down. Let's get Carlos in here. Carlos, hop on. All right. Hop on, Carlos. I don't remember you being on here before, but Carlos, hop on. All right. Carlos, where you at? I guess Carlos ain't trying to say nothing. 
right. Let's get um okay. You hear Carlos? Hijo de puta, chinga tu puta madre, cabrón. Now, Carlos, um, I do not want an order from Chipotle. Um, it's too late for me to eat. I don't like to eat after 12. All right. So let's see who else is on here. I think he asked me if I, if I wanted a burrito salad, and it's, it's too late. I don't want to eat that late. And that um, citrus dressing messes with my gout. So let's see who else is on here. Um, uh, Giancarlo, was that one of your cousins? All right. Let's see who else. Because we do have a lot of folks in here. And I ain't going to be out here too, too long because I got business to handle. Let me get one more good call in here. One more good call. Who is this? It's Barry A. Barry, you want to hop on? <clears throat> Barry Akon. All right. Barry Akon, and then we'll get um, Holistic Honey. Look like we get the 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 tether trolls in here tonight. So, Terry, hey. what's going on? Thanks for letting me up. Oh, sorry, Barry. Go ahead. Let's get Barry, and then we get Holistic. Hey, Terry. Barry, look, I get your pers- I don't. I get uh, your. Pers- perspective on a lot of things you talk about I, i've watched all your documentaries and i'm looking forward to watching the newest one yes i have a i do have a disagreement with the fleeing thing um my parents obviously were born in nigeria and I was, obviously i'm a non-fba um i was born here in america but um the your your philosophy or your perspective on fleeing I definitely disagree with it. Uh, A lot of Africans didn't just disagree. I mean, uh, excuse me, it didn't just flee just because. Dude, stop. 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 I got to stop being ashamed. Stop stop with the shame, man. Come on, man. Stop being ashamed. Y'all got a bug in y'all ass about that, dude. There's videos out now. All over West Africa, man, where boats are pulling up and grown ass men are just stepping over each other, running to boats to get the hell out of there, dude. Let's stop. Let's call it what it is. See that uh, y'all got a lot of bugs in your ass. Y'all try to make it seem like the, some princes of Munda shit, where y'all came over pretending to be poor, and you got a mansion. Yeah, that's y'all. Y'all tell women that at the club. Y'all been so used to telling the princes of Munda lie. And when people tell the truth, then you, you, y'all, oh, I, come on, Tariq, I like you, nigga, but don't say that. Don't say flee. No, 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 yeah, stop. Yeah, okay, let, let me, let me, let's talk. Let's talk. We're going to get real. See, the first well, Tariq, the- isn't it extra oh. embarrassing when they leave? Like, they leave their people behind. And the people that leave would naturally be the most intelligent, the people most capable of leadership. Uh, at least that's what I would think. And they're leaving their people with a brain drain. How are they ever going to, like, rebuild their country with people i mean frankly i don't want to be mean but the lower like half of the quality of the the, the various groups would you agree with that would that make holistic, more now, uh, holistic are you in canada or the u.s you sound I'm in, Canadian. Uh, actually no no i'm in ireland right now why oh okay uh yeah i knew there was some kind of northern european thing so your family's from ireland right no no, no i'm not from ireland i'm a globe trider i'm rootless oh okay well, what, what are you doing in ireland out of all places whatever, right now. Whatever I feel like. Oh, okay, because yeah, Ireland is not really a vacation destination, but where is your family originally from in Europe? Yeah, I'm meeting one of my EGFs, so it's not a big deal. Where is my family originally from? Uh, frankly, I was grown up in an orphanage. It's a little embarrassing. It's kind of a touchy subject, so I don't know where my family is from. It's not. It just say you're embarrassed because you came from the slums of Europe, okay? That's, yeah, and that's another thing, well, let's too. Say, Somebody, let's say I did. Is that bad? No, because let's be clear, because I don't want you, you're not going to point the finger over at the African nations when many of the suspected white supremacists, y'all come from the slums of Europe and you had to flee too. So you can't point the finger at them and you fled yourself. You see, that's that's something else that y'all got to deal with. Well, I was agreeing with you. I understand. But the thing is, you fled too. Why are you bullying me then? Because you can't point the finger. 
because you know, because you know, no, 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 I'm not Jesse Lee Peterson. You're not going to sit with me to point fingers and denigrate Africans because that's a family never... dispute. All right, but that that's a family dispute. I don't discuss family disputes with outsiders, especially one who came from a fleeing damn lineage itself. You fled too, sir. You come from fleers too, right? Okay. Well, I don't think right. I don't think it's a I don't think it's bad for you to assume that. But I mean, I was born into no, the MK I'm Ultra not an program. That's not an assumption, sir. You come, your family fled from the slums of Europe, and you're probably, you're Irish. That's probably, if you're in Ireland, I don't even think you're in Ireland. You're probably Irish, but you're not in Ireland. Ireland is not no tourist destination. Ireland is a high-class slum right now. And that's probably where your family is from, sir. And you're probably ashamed to admit it. That's why you're dancing all over the, the question. A lot of you no, white I'm not dancing. I, I admit the charge. Uh, I was a baby. No. No, 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 no. You're just kind of trying to troll your way out of it. But no, you no. probably, yes, you are. You came from the slums of Europe with head lice, um, uh, with a potato famine stomach. And if it weren't for foundation of black Americans creating and building and the foundation of the most powerful nation in the country or in the world, rather, you would still be over there scratching your ass and digging for roots to gnaw on. All right. So let's get somebody else on here. All right. Let's get Hitch Lap. Yeah, I'm not going to sit with you and you're going to point the finger at the African nation and talk shit. No, you're not going to do that. Um, Hitch Lap, what's up, man? Uh, Tariq, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Buddy? I'm good, thank you. Um, just want to ask you a question, what you think about uh, IQ uh, as it relates to kind of individual differences. So uh, two people from the same ethnic group, uh, you know, how much do you think is genetic? How much do you think is not genetic? Right. Um, and you're from, are you Australian? Uh, yeah, I am. That's right. Okay. Um, the IQ thing, yeah, IQ thing is kind of a, it's it's just used as a justification to to harm people who are non-white because all of the white people with low IQs, there's never any justification to really harm them. The IQ thing is always used to try to justify harming black people. They say, well, black people inherently have a lower IQ, yet you have educational and systematic deprivation. So that contradicts itself. If there's a group of people whose IQ is already low, there would be no need for systematic deprivation. Um, you would have to give them the best of things if their IQs are low, but you don't. You punish and you deprive. So that means you're intimidated by these people who you say have a lower IQ. So that's a real interesting dynamic. Um, do you yeah, think you like, as a person? Do you think you as a person of um, European descent, Britain? You're from Britain. Your your, your lineage is in Britain. Do you think that there's a higher IQ there? Uh, I'm more than happy to answer, but I just want to preface by saying I'm not talking about race differences. I'm just saying uh, two black Americans, uh, you know, one might be smarter than the other. Uh, how much of the difference between two random black Americans, two random uh, Europeans from the same race or same group, how much do you think of the differences there are uh, genetic? That was more my question, if that's okay. But that That's a question that doesn't really make any sense. That's It's like a, an extremely random non sequitur. It just really doesn't make any sense without any kind of context. What's the context of that? Because the context has to be some type of um, racial justification for something. So what's the racial justification conclusion you're trying to come to? Um, oh, yeah. No, for example, let's take a homogeneous country like Poland. Uh, most people are of Polish descent there. Uh, some people in a classroom in Poland, uh, some kids in the class will be very smart. Other people will be not as smart in that class. Uh, my question is, how much do you think the differences in intelligence between, you know, a class in Poland or any other place where everybody's the same race, uh, you know, or, or do you think that some people are smarter than others, you know, for genetic reasons, for, who are from the same race? Um, no, I don't think that race has anything to do with intelligence. I really don't think that, because if that were the case, why would you deprive people if you designate their race of being lower IQ, the white society who decides whose IQs are the highest or the lowest, it's determined by the white supremacists. And they said that well, black, maybe, and they were, they said maybe, that, sorry, go go ahead. Ahead. 
Um, um, maybe I can put it a different way. Like, um, you know, you have a family of 10 people. Um, do you think or is it your opinion that some people in that family, you know, same parents, same siblings, whatever, uh, do you think some people in that family are more intelligent than other people in that family for genetic reasons? Or uh, do you think genes play no role in intelligence for 10 siblings from the same family with the same parents? Yeah, there could be some kind of congenital deficiencies. Yeah, of course. There could be certain birth defects, congenital neurological deficiencies. So, yeah, different factors play in, of course. So, what, what... Oh, the, the reason I ask, the reason I ask is I should, I should have kind of said this at the start. Um, some people think that, um, you know, take 10 people from the same family, they're all healthy, you know, none of them are any kind of uh, medical issue or whatever. Um, some people think that uh, everybody in that family should have identical average IQs. That is to say, none of the differences between 10 people from the same family are genetic. Uh, any differences you see in intelligence or intelligence scores are entirely environmental. Uh, that's my question. Do you think, assuming no one has any physical defects, uh, do you think differences in intelligence of 10 people from the same family, do you think it's entirely environmental or do you think there's some genetic role uh, with 10 people from the same family it's inconsequential doesn't matter it's just that's like asking me man what tastes better a whopper or a big mac it did it, it's that's such an inconsequential thing it's irrelevant it's completely irrelevant literally to anything other than racial domination there's well i can go to the oh, hold yeah, on, go hold ahead. On. there's literally no other reason to come to a conclusion like that or to even raise a question like that, literally for no other reason other than racial domination justification. There's literally no other reason for that. That's how inconsequential those type of non sequiturs are. They don't really matter in anything other than white supremacist circles, sir. So what uh, you're doing... Um, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 because what you're doing, sir, you are trying to intellectualize some white supremacist views. See, what you're doing is a very covert form of white supremacy that you're doing. You're coming in as if you're just asking a general question. You're just asking about science. You're coming in friendly, like, hey, what do you think about um, if you had 10 people? And you, I'm just asking a number about science and numbers. But you're not. Uh, and I want black folks to understand how white supremacy works. See, this is a lesson here. White supremacy is not everybody being overtly angry or mean to you. This is the form of white supremacy that's more insidious when they come in being friendly, but using scientific justifications in order to harm us and trying to get us to agree with it. Notice how this gentleman keeps trying to get me to agree. No, no, Sorry, no, no, teaching, no, no, this is a great thing because I want to teach my folks here. I want y'all to notice how this gentleman on the phone keeps trying to get me to agree to his, his racial scientific um, discoveries. This is all bell curve stuff, by the way, you know, for those who don't know, this is some bell curve shit he's trying to do. Um, and he's trying to kind of remix it and present it so that we can kind of agree with it. So that, hey, as you see, you people have lower IQs and um, you guys justified it. And that's used to harm us and deprive us of more resources. That's all that's for. It's not for anything else. So black people, you better understand this type of white supremacy when you encounter it, because it's a passive aggressive hostile form of white supremacy that many black people don't catch because he's coming in friendly with it. That's the kind of white supremacy that's the problem. Okay? All right. Uh, I might like to respond or if not, I understand. Go ahead, Hitch. And um, you're, you're posting the, something. So take it off the, the thing. I don't know what you're posting. Oh, Go my, ahead. My, it, it was going to be um, germane to what I was about to say, but you can delete absolutely no problem. I did. Um, I did. Go ahead. Uh, what I was going to say is you kind of asked why it's relevant. I was just going to say uh, why it's relevant, you know, 10 people from the same family with the same parents. Um, IQ predicts job performance within siblings. Uh, so siblings that score uh, higher in IQ have a better job performance. So that's why IQ is important. 
as highly predictive, of especially complicated job performance. So that's why it's relevant. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, no, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't really have anything to do with uh, um, assessing somebody's IQ. Um, what does that have to do with their job performance? If you look at somebody's IQ, um, people don't look at IQs when you hire people. You just look at their performances and you look at how well they do the job, how well they show up. You look at how well they do things on a personal level. No job looks at anybody's IQ. Nobody measures anybody's IQ for a job. So I don't know where you got that from, sir. So what I posted in the Jumbotron was college majors by average IQ. And across that, you see physicists have a 135 IQ on average. Um, school teachers have a 105 IQ on average. Uh, there you see more complicated jobs require higher IQs. Uh, also, in job performance, uh, they've done this in medical fields. Um, uh, surgeons with higher IQs have less mistakes, uh, less people have issues, less infections, etc. So there's been quite a few studies where they um, take IQ samples and then they measure job performance uh, as it relates to mistakes. You can also look at this in programming. Yeah. Uh, programmers with a higher IQ perform better than programmers oh. with a lower IQ that have more output, etc. So, okay, so do you think, based on like the bell curve and all that, do you think that um people of african descent have lower iqs than people of european descent uh it's a complicated oh. question i'll try to keep it as short as i can um on there's two average. questions on yeah. average uh, yeah there's two questions here uh is there a gap in scoring and what is the cause of the gap um the, the first question is, yes, there is a gap in scoring. What is the cause? Um, I, I would not give any answer on what is the cause. You, you said very correctly it's probably a strong uh, environmental impact. That is to say, um, <clears throat> living in a you know impoverished environment, an impoverished nutrition, uh, violence, etc., uh, this is going to bring down the IQ scores of people in that area. So there's definitely environmental impacts um, on the black-white IQ gap for sure. Um, but uh, to the question, do... do um, you know, uh, black Americans score lower than um, uh, white Europeans on average. Uh, yes, they do score lower. There's no dispute about that. Why they score lower, that's a different uh, different question altogether. No, 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 no. Because see, y'all never get into the why. Y'all say that black people got lower IQs and then y'all don't want to get into the why. That's a different score thing altogether. Then you start talking about um, environmental issues like nutrition. Why is the nutrition bad in black areas? Um, nutrition, as far as I know, largely comes down to the parenting. The parents decide what they feed the kids, right? Okay. So why do the parents in black areas decide to feed kids bad, non-nutritious foods? Uh, you could make a cultural argument. Uh, you can make a genetic argument. You can make multiple. I will say this is not my area of why parents feed their uh, kids uh, worse foods. I'm, I'm not, I don't have an answer to that question. You'd have to ask them. Why don't I guess. you, what, what, you what, mm -hmm. sir, you got... Mm -hmm. all types of IQ stats. Mm -hmm. You can answer a simple question as to why more black people feed their children less nutritious foods. That's not even a trick question. If you got all of these high scientific IQ questions and you can't answer basically a social economic question, why, why can't you um, answer that? You have to have a theory. What's your theory? Well, I can guess as long as it's clear that it's a guess. I don't know the answer to your question. Um, <clears throat> uh, my guess would be two major points. Uh, one would be, uh, uh, you know, financial. Obviously, you could argue the low socioeconomic status is going to lend itself to ordering more takeout food, etc. Uh, some oh. people would rebut that by saying that takeout food is actually more expensive uh, than cooking a vegetable soup or a spaghetti bolognese, for example. Uh, so there's kind of arguments in both directions there. You can make a cultural argument that um, some <clears throat> Some uh, cultures have more of a uh, kind of heritage of having a family gathering and, you know, the whole food preparation is a family event, um, whereas other cultures may have had a more, um, you know, if you're, depending on your fast life or slow life history, uh, you may have not have had such an impact or focus on uh, family preparation of food, etc. Uh, in that way, you just want a quick, easy meal. Uh, preparing the food isn't important, isn't a kind of family issue. So uh, you can make a cultural argument or you can make a, uh, you know, social economic argument. Okay, let's go with the socioeconomic argument that there's some financial deficiencies. So why are there financial deficiencies in the black areas? Um, do you think that takeout food is more expensive than, say, a home-cooked meal? What no, would your view be on that? no. McDonald's, you can get a, a gazillion hamburgers for $2. So that's where 
a lot of impoverished people eat. They eat at places like McDonald's where you can have a couple of dollars and you can feed your family, stuff like that. So why would a lot of black people be in a financially strapped situation in order for them to get the gazillion piece McNugget meal for three dollars? Why? Um, uh, I will answer that. I'll just say uh, my understanding in Australia, at least, because uh, I'm in Australia, um, that you know, a home cooked meal with say pasta, spaghetti bolognese, vegetable soup, uh, you feed six people with that's going to be way cheaper than getting uh, six hamburgers in Australia, at least. I don't know the American prices, but uh, in answer to your question, why? Um, why is there a lot? Why are black communities do have do they have a lower socioeconomic income? Is that your question? Yes, sir. Please don't play dumb. You're dancing. No, all no, over. no. I'm just. No, I just wow. want to clarify. Okay, okay. You um, said generally. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Gen- Go ahead. Uh, well, my understanding is that you know, so a combined family income is generally a result of your employment, right? Uh, if you've got a uh, high quality job, you're going to get a high quality income. So, combined income is a result of employment. Uh, that's my understanding. Okay, so why are black people having a lack of employment? Um, uh, well, that is, it's not that they, I don't know if they have less employment, but I do know they have, you know, they, op, <clears throat> they take up kind of, um, you know, lower strata jobs. They're not doing kind of physics and this kind of thing. Uh, I guess the next question is, gonna, that's yeah, go ahead. Well, why? So why? There's, less, there's employment deprivation. There's a lot of black people who are not employed who wish to be. Why is that, sir? Um, uh, the type of employment you get is generally commensurate with your IQ score. Again, this is going to causation versus descriptive. Um, but why are they not working? I mean, you'd have to ask them. I don't know why they're not working. Uh, I know why they're in different jobs. Uh, they're in different jobs because they're scoring differently on IQ tests. Uh, why they're scoring so, differently so, is a more so complicated your, so question. The whole, okay, so, your, so your whole thing is circular logic. Black people uh, have... So? It, it's circular. Mm-hmm. Black people have low IQs. So they get lower paying jobs because they lay low IQs. So they eat lower quality food, which contributes more to the low IQs. And they keep getting lower paying jobs so they can eat worse food. And it just goes on and on and on. It's a cycle. You just blame the IQ on the IQ on the IQ. It just goes back to the IQ. So, oh no, I've not been talking about causation. I've just been talking about descriptive, descriptive versus causality, uh, two different things. I said at the start that causality is very hard to establish. Uh, it's very easy to do a quantitative analysis and be descriptive, uh, which is what I'm kind of, um, you know, not trained in, but I uh, focus but on you, descriptive but, analysis. But, yeah, but but okay, but yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't make sense though, because if you're saying that the bad foods cause the the low IQs, okay, what kicked off the bad food, okay? What kicked off oh, the bad, uh, okay? What, and yeah. what kicked off the economic deprivation? Uh, Nutrition is going to explain about ten percent of the variance in intelligence. So there's still ninety percent to go. So uh, food wouldn't be ma- being the major cause uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I would say. Okay, so what caused black people to have to eat bad foods initially? Uh, well, there's two hypotheses. I don't know the answer, but I can present them both if you like. Give me one. Uh, one hypothesis is that due to slavery, um, black Americans have been discriminated against consistently. Uh, redlining has applied policies that restricted uh, people in the black community from getting into better neighborhoods. Uh, this has caused them to coalesce in more po- impoverished neighborhoods. Uh, thus, discrimination explains the entire uh, IQ difference, and that's had a knock-on effect uh, because they've been right. redlining into tighter neighborhoods. Yeah, this is one right. hypothesis. Go ahead. Right, which is the real problem. White supremacy, that's the problem. That's what I'm saying. The problem is not nothing to do with IQs. Our only problem is what you just confirmed, systematic white supremacy. If we didn't have systematic white supremacy, we wouldn't have food deprivation, economic deprivation, And then, as you said, which I don't agree with, IQ deprivation based on the foods, but the culprit is white supremacy. So if we're going to focus on IQ, let's focus on replacing the system of white supremacy with justice so they do not produce low IQ people, right? Oh, yeah, that's one hypothesis. The idea is that if you fix discrimination and racism, you would close the IQ gaps to zero, 
uh, everybody would have identical IQs and then everybody would have the same uh, average jobs, basically, right? That's your idea? Um, that's a proven thing. If we didn't have systematic white supremacy, I think we would be a more advanced society because it was black people who were the Moors who went in bringing in high science, mathematics, and intelligence into Europe during the Dark Ages. So that right there alleviates the whole um, black low IQ thing. Black people saved Europe. Is that true or false, sir? I want you to acknowledge that either being true or false. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not my area. I'll take oh, your okay. word for it if you say it's true. Yeah, um, yeah. My area yeah. is quantitative uh, analysis. Got it. Okay. So, because when we go into that IQ thing, some of the, the earliest universities. Well, yeah. If, maybe I could ask you a question. Tell me what you think. Uh, it's my go understanding ahead. that kind of Af African immigrants um, who kind of come over to America, uh, they both have a higher average IQ than black Americans and they get higher paying jobs. Uh, why do you think that is, uh, given that they're both black? Is it hard to argue a discrimination in that case? Uh, Coleman Hughes, a kind of black intellectual, he kind of uh, forwards this point. I've not heard a good answer yet. Uh, what would you say to that? Um, um, I would say, have you seen your latest Uber driver? A lot of African immigrants come over here and they're driving Uber and working minimum wage, sir. So this whole myth that they're coming and getting all of these high paying jobs, and I'm not denigrating our African brothers and sisters, but a lot of them are working Uber and Postmates and minimum wage jobs. So what you're saying is a myth. Uh, well, well, as far as I as far as I understand, uh, you know, I can present you with some studies if you want. I don't know if you've seen different ones, but uh, the average African immigrant has a higher average income than the average Black American. Uh, that's my understanding. Do you think no, that's not well, true? Not, no, they have a higher household income. Okay, now let's put the words in context. They have a higher household income. You know why? Oh, in please! Fact, I'd love to know. I'm going to tell you why. So you y'all leave little words out. Yeah, the African immigrants have a higher household income. See, they look at income based on what's bringing in for the whole household. Um, foundational black American households are usually run by one or two people. African immigrant households have 30 people living in the motherfuckers. And everybody's working Uber. So, yeah, the income is going to be higher you got to count every 30 or 40 people living in the house. So, yeah, it's higher. They got more people living in the house, more adults uh, in there. That's the thing yeah, you got to tell. It's not that they're working harder. It's just more people in the house. You understand? With respect, yeah, with respect, Tariq, uh, Coleman Hughes, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's got two articles on this. Uh, it's classed as uh, family income, family income being people genetically related. Uh, there's no way that you're going to have uh, you know, friends and cousins and relatives contributing to family income. I can forward the Coleman Hughes articles to you if you like. Um, that makes no sense. What do you mean there's no way you're going to have family and, and friends contributing to the so income? What are, is are, you, are, you, are you saying that like uh, people who are genetically unrelated, they're all living in the same house and uh, they're all working um, you know, Uber jobs and there's 20 of them in the house, as you said, or something like that? Um, many of these, no, I'm, I'm, saying, yeah, I'm saying many of these immigrant households, there are a lot of people living in the households bringing in incomes. You have several adults living under one roof. That's very common for them. And so, yeah, on paper, the income is going to be higher because there's 10, 15 people living under one roof who are adults in many cases. It's not just one or two people like foundational black Americans. You understand what I'm saying? But and also, um, I, mm, go, go ahead. ahead. Now, I, I get the point that you're making, but I, I disagree that that's what the data says. Uh, when I talk about families, they mean uh, one, two adults and children. No, uh, that's they're what they not. Mean by family income. No, they're not. No, no, no. They mean everybody in the house. They're, that doesn't mean one or two people and the children. Family means everybody living in that house. And immigrant groups, um, they have several adults living under one roof. And all of that income counts as one family income. That's the reality. And Coleman Hughes is a white ass kissing Sambo with bad faith arguments. He's Puerto Rican. He's not even a foundational black American. He is he Puerto Rican? Oh my yes, God, he I didn't is. know that. Yes, Puerto Rican. he's Puerto Rican. Yep, he's Puerto Rican. And I always he, thought he was black American. No, he's not. He's not black American at all. 
He pretends to be black American. He's actually Puerto Rican. Look his background up. So, so he's a prime example of what oh we're talking about. Oh my goodness, Col Coleman Hughes has been tricking me this whole time. Yes, indeed. And he's, he's um, a melanated face that works with these um, white supremacist think tanks. He works with them and they have him go out here and spew their talking points. Um, he, he's with Quillette. That's one of these white supremacist think tanks. And um, they, they put these talking points out and they put their uh, melanated tethers out here to pretend to be us. That's what a tether is. But Coleman Hughes, his name is Coleman Cruz Hughes. He likes to leave the Cruz out because it sounds too Latino, which is what he is. So, yeah, he's not a representative of us at all. But go ahead. Why do you think that uh, why do you think that East Asians uh, score higher on IQ tests than uh, white Europeans and also East Asians have a higher average income uh, than Europeans? Is it discrimination against Europeans or how are the East Asians doing so well, do you think? Uh, you know, East Asians will look at some of the policies now when immigrants come over here, Asians included, they are elevated over foundational black Americans. Not only that, when they come here. When they flee here from Asia and when people flee here from South America, what they leave home, they leave their child support payments back home. They leave their bad credit back home and they come over here as adults and start off with a fresh new Social Security number, a fresh new line of credit and a whole tax base of money that's allocated to them by certain political lobby groups. So they get elevated and assisted with our tax dollars. So yeah, they do good because of the policies that we actually, uh, foundational black Americans, help fight for them to get. Asians came over here in the 1960s in large numbers, and that was because of foundational black Americans fighting for not only those immigration policies, when the Asians got here, we were the ones who were the economic base for their businesses. When they opened up liquor stores and nail shops, we didn't discriminate against them. We saw them as another oppressed minority. We said we'll support them. So we've supported some of these groups and elevated them and helped them. They can't sit here and talk about how intelligent they are and your homeland is a shithole. You understand? So that kills the intelligence argument right there. If you got so much intelligence, why is people out there shitting in the streets over in these homelands? Explain that. Oh, like Japan and Taiwan? Uh, I mean, East Asians, I mean, like Japanese, Taiwanese, etc. No, those are not South the ones Korean. who immigrate here. Let's stop. Those, aren't th those, those are not the ones who immigrate here. The ones from Japan, let's don't play that game. You know, and I mean, well East, East Asians, right? East Asians, uh -oh, are Chinese, sorry. Han Chinese. Uh -oh. Y'all trying to play this game. The, the Japanese don't immigrate over here like that. It's some of these um, Thai and Cambodian and Laos and um, some of these other groups come over here. And they score high over here. You know, they get access to, to proper educations, which is cool. But if it's a genetic thing, why are their homelands in shambles to the point where they have to flee? Uh, my understanding is that there's Han Chinese, who are the uh, Chinese-Americans, and Chinese Americans outperform uh, white Europeans uh, in both in uh, IQ tests and also in higher average income. Uh, that was my question. Why do Chinese Americans perform so well? Uh, they beat, you know, even the kind of uh, white majority. They outperform them by a significant margin. That was but then you would have to okay, because so that that's strange. I, I gotta you gotta qualify that question because if that's the case, why are they working for pennies in factories in China if they have so much intelligence that they bring here? Why are they working for pennies over there in them factories? Oh, yeah, I completely agree. Like an economic policy, for example, communism, uh, this is going to yield a different result uh, for the same kind of genetic group. But uh, as far as I know, and you know, tell me if you've heard different, uh, Chinese Americans outperform white Europeans uh, both in IQ and in income. Is that your understanding for Chinese uh, Americans? But, 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 but you said something interesting. You said because of communism, you know, that's going to have an effect on um economic outcomes is that what you say oh yeah i said economic um yeah an economic ideology such as communism where uh, you know have the uh, proletariat versus the bourgeoisie or you know the government controls the means of production um this is going to have obviously affect how much a uh, uh, individual companies can use the free market to both help themselves and individuals uh, att attain higher income. So uh, to hold uh, all the variables constant uh, i'm comparing chinese that's americans yeah
great uh, great point. So they can't really thrive over there because of the oppressive communist system where they can't really thrive in the free market because of the system of oppression, which is communism, which I agree. So when we point out the same oppressive system of white supremacy that puts systematic obstacles in our way as foundational black Americans, people kind of try to ignore that and say, oh, no, 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 it's not the oppressive system. It's just the IQs. No. It's the oppressive system here that thwarts a lot of our progress. That's why they put the system there, right? Um, definitely, any any oppressive any oppressive system in principle is going to have an impact. But I guess I'm curious on your view why Chinese Americans uh, outperform European Americans. That's my kind of curious. Uh, if if you have any ideas on that, well, well they outperform how? What do you mean they outperform? Uh, Chinese Americans, on average, score 106 on IQ tests. Uh, white European, uh, white Americans score 100. Uh, Chinese Americans' average income is something like 30 percent higher um, than European Americans, uh, white Americans. So uh, Chinese Americans are outperforming Europeans both on IQ tests and income and various other metrics. Uh, Chinese Americans have lower crime rates than white Americans. Um, they uh, leave more, uh, you know, by all kinds of metrics. Chinese Americans are outperforming. Uh, white Americans. I'm just curious uh, if you knew that and if you're just curious if you have any ideas why. Well, my thing is if that's the case, um, why are there so many Chinese Americans and people who come over here and they're in these school scams? They get into these school scandals where they are faking their test results left and right. Do you know how major that is? Google that. There's a lot of Chinese students who come over here and there are several cases where they are scamming scores on their test, getting into these schools, getting these degrees. There's all types of Chinese scam degrees going on over here. So if there's all of this intelligence, why is there a need to have all of these school scams? That's pretty common. And I want you to Google what I just told you. No, I'm, I'm across it. I know what you're talking about. Um, I kind of use one example. A few years ago, the Australian cricket team, uh, they were on top. They were beating everyone. And uh, a couple of the players uh, started tampering with the ball. Um, you know, you might ask yourself, why would a team that's already winning start doing ball tampering? I guess my answer would be to both questions. Um, you know, anybody can cheat. Anybody can try to get an advantage. doesn't matter if they're white Americans, Chinese Americans or whatever. Uh, so or whatever took place there, I agree. It's probably had some impact. But uh, there was an ABC study recently. It, had, it was a $500 million study uh, of um, uh, 10-year-old kids. And that, that had a genetic study and an IQ test. And uh, both tests reflected that East Asians um, have a higher average IQ than uh, white Europeans. I'm trying to stick to the white, uh, the white Chinese no, American kind of example. Because that one contradicts the other, dude. I, I'm in L.A., man. There was a big cheating. There was a whole cheating ring at UCLA out here, man, that they busted all these people. If yo, you got all these IQs and... Were they the all IQ Chinese or was it mixed? Were they all Chinese it was or a, was it, it was a people? Chinese, it was Chinese cheating bus. Google it. Google the Los Angeles UCLA Chinese cheating ring. Um, Google Chinese cheating rampant in U.S. colleges. It's rampant, brother. The, there yeah. was a recent. Uh, tell, tell me if I'm mistaken. There was a recent um, <clears throat> kind of expose where uh, you know white Americans were also paying their way into university and cheating on. Yeah, tests, right? yes, uh, was, yes, yeah. them too. Yes, so it's not exclusive to the Chinese Americans, though, right? Didn't say that, but we don't do it. it well, we damn sure black foundational black Americans. We got to earn ours. We don't have no cheating rings at all. Well, uh, let's say the Chinese Americans are somehow cheating on all their IQ tests across the board. Uh, why do they have a higher average income? Why do they get better jobs and why do they earn more money? Would you say Chinese Americans? Um, because they get funded by the states here. They get just like we're seeing now. What we're seeing right now is the reason why. Number one, they get funded by the white supremacists. They get prioritized for funding. They get prioritized for businesses. And their businesses do not get sabotaged. Also, their underground market doesn't get tampered with. Meaning, the drugs and the guns that they sell on the underground market, they don't bust that up like they do black underground economies all of the fentanyl and all of that stuff that's coming from chinese ships they got an underground market of drugs and guns and they have the chinese el chapo it was an asian guy i want to say he was part of the 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 chinese mafia this guy was making uh, uh, billions of dollars these guys were making el chapo seem like a corner boy 
So you guys, the, the, the Asian community, they have an underground economy, an underground market, a criminal enterprise that's not tampered with, and they get underwritten by tax dollars so that they can be elevated over foundation of black Americans. So they're, they're elevated by the white supremacist. That's why they do better um, than certain people. Yeah. Pardon me if you've covered this in your book, so I haven't got around to reading all of them, but uh, <clears throat> I guess the next question would be the group that performs the best, uh, I won't say why they perform because I don't know, um, but the Ashkenazi Jews, the Jewish Americans, uh, they have an even higher IQ than the Chinese Americans. Also, their average income is higher than the Chinese Americans. They seem to perform the best. Um, why do the uh, Jew- Jewish Americans do so well, in your view, both in IQ tests um, and also in um, average income? And so you're saying their religion has something to do with their IQ? No, the um, Ashkenazi Jews are a genetic group. If you plot them, um, I can post something to the Jumbotron if you want, but I guess you don't want me to. Um, there's a genetic chart. It's something called a cluster analysis. Uh, you can also use principal component analysis. You can see the Ashkenazi Jews, um, genetically, they're substantially different um, to uh, white Europeans. I know I've heard it before in some of the black American rooms, they say what, what's the uh, origin Jews of the white. What, what's the origin of their lineage? Um, the Ashkenazi Jews, the male lineage comes from the uh, Levantine. They've got an extra Levantine admixture. Uh, there's some controversial to, about this, uh, depending on which geneticist you talk to. Uh, but generally speaking, the maternal lineage, the mother's line, uh, that comes from European. The father's line comes from uh, the North African, Middle East or the Levantine uh, kind of area. So they're uh, Semitic or Arabic, um, to put it in simple terms, but uh, Levantine, Levantine or Levantine. Um, is their genetic line. So they're genetically different so, to so white North, Americans. Okay, so North, North East Africa kind of over there in East, East that area, because you have a lot of the, um, some East African people who are Jews too. So in fact, there's an East African tribe who's a Jewish tribe over there in Southeast Africa. Um, yeah, great so, point, because it's, it's both a religious group and an ethnic group, but um, right, if you because, take see, the that, religion out of it, yeah, go ahead. Oh, all right, we're going to go to the contradiction because, okay, if we're going to go back and you're saying there's, a, there's an African tribe where, where they come part of that lineage comes from Africa and they got a higher IQ, then you're saying that... Uh, North North Africa, um, not Sub-Saharan oh, okay. Africa. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so again, I don't... That whole Sub-Saharan Africa thing, because you got black people in North Africa too. And in fact, um, the Europeans would always portray Jewish people as black, Okay, that was the whole argument with Hitler and the Nazis. That you, you understand that, right? That was the problem that they had with Jewish people. It so was Jewish re- people. Jewish people are, are black, and no, I've not heard this. Sorry, What's, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. Why do, honestly, no, no, I'm not well educated on this. What, that's what. That's the problem that they had with Jewish people, because Hitler, and if you read Mein Kampf, he would say, "Well, the problem with Jews, they're a race of Negroes." That's what he said in Mein Kampf. That Jews was the whole. Negroes? Oh, I, I didn't know that. I'm not up with uh, Mein Kampf. I'm telling you what the white supremacists said. I'm telling you what the the white supremacists said in Germany and all of that. And and really going back some years, the whole narrative was that Jewish people are really a race of Negroes. That's what they said. This is what they were saying. So oh, that's interesting. Right. So if you're going to go into the IQ thing. And you just said that, well, the part of that lineage goes into North Africa, then and the, the Jewish people, their IQs are higher. Would that come from the African lineage? Um, uh, again, I will say I'm not trying to be rude or argumentative, but um, uh, these days, genetically, there's a massive divide between sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa. Um, the What's Jewish the divide? lineage How- comes from... Uh, there's something called genetic distance or FST distance. It's fi- fixation index. It's a measure of a genetic distance between two groups. And uh, what you see is what, what, <coughs> slow the down, biggest... Slow down, uh, slow down, slow down, slow yeah. down, because the, y'all play this sure. game with, with North Africa and Southern Africa. Sure. Uh, North yeah. Africans have a, a big genetic difference between sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, you can observe it visually. You can observe it genetically. You can observe it medically. Um, the way that the medical... Go ahead. How? 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 How so? Um, when so, people, uh, they were now hold on, let me, let me say this because people, yeah, sure. they, uh, North Africa is not really landlocked from Southern Africa. They can travel back and forth. They have the Nile River, What's which the Sahara, Sahara Desert, River. right? The Sahara Desert. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Let's stop with that. No, no, no. That Sahara Desert is, that doesn't stop the cultures from running up and down Africa. The Nile River 
runs from North Africa to Southern Africa. You understand? And then on the east, the, the west side of Africa, they can go into North Africa from the west side. So they, they, it's not landlocked. There are no land boundaries stopping the people from interacting with each other. So people try, you know, a lot of white supremacists try to make it seem like there's some kind of, the, the like the, the Saharan Desert is like some kind of ocean that they got across. No, it's not. The, the people well, you move, can freely. They move freely up yeah, and down and it, Africa and so interacted. And there's black people, many black people in North Africa. You have invaders who came later. And a lot of the people with the so-called genetic differences are really invaders from other places, the Turks and um, the Eurasians and all of that stuff. But black people move freely up and down North and South Africa. There was not a real big difference, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, let's say I make no claims about the origins of the differences. Everything you say could be completely true. Uh, I only mean uh, today, right now, if you take a genetic cross-section of a North African, Sub-Saharan Africa, and you plot them on a genetic chart, it's called a PCA or a principal component analysis, uh, you'll see that North Africans are very far away today from sub-Saharan, Sub-Saharan Africans very far today. So whatever happened in the past, then I'm making no claims. Um, but genetically today, the Ashkenazi Jews that exist, uh, they're genetically um, you know, subst- very, very different to Sub-Saharan Africans. That's the only claim that when you sample people today, uh, there's a massive difference between North Africans and Sub-Saharan Africans genetically. But back in the days, if you're going to go to lineage, because um, many people migrated and moved all over the place, but if you're going to talk about lineage, you're going to talk about the lineage, what it was, and what were the people looking like um, centuries ago. And if we're talking about uh, many Jewish people, you had so-called sub-Saharan black people who were um, Jews going up and down North Africa and South Africa and even going into Europe. Look up a man, El Dan the Danite, who was a very famous black Jewish person who really spread a lot of information about Judaism to Europe. I want to say in the eighth or ninth century, El Dan the Danite. Um, there's a, an African tribe over there in East um, um, East Africa, Jewish black tribe, and in many European documents, they would always portray, early documents, they would portray Jewish people as uh, either black or mulatto race. That was part of what was the Inquisition about in Spain, too. When they were getting the Moors out, they were also getting the, the Jewish population out because the Jewish population, according to the Europeans there and the Spanish, they had a significant black and African bloodline. So there's always been this narrative that Jewish people have a significant African bloodline. So your argument about them being more intelligent, that would contribute to that African bloodline, right? Um, well, it depends on your time frame. My understanding is um, everything you're referring to, well, I, I don't know exactly the details of what you're referring to, but my understanding is the divergence uh, happened, I don't know, some three to 5,000 years ago, if not longer. Uh, if you want to go back you know, further enough, we all came from Africa. Uh, 60,000 years ago, we were all black as far as I know. So, yeah, the lineage, uh, any, yeah, any IQ difference you see today all come from Africa. Uh, we are all African. Right. Well, I'm not going back that far. See, I don't want to do the catch-all thing because, see, when you start how, talking how far, about How far are you going back, if you don't mind me asking? Like 100 years, 5,000 years, like roughly? Um, it's, how far am I going back to what? Because you're the one who uh, when, said, when you say that the kind of Jews, uh, the Jews were melanated and had black skin, etc., how far back was that? Well, this was a couple of centuries um, going into Europe. This is what they said. This is what they were saying a few centuries ago. Um, and you were the one who said, you brought up the fact that the Jewish yeah, yeah. people weren't really white. You said, this is you, you said they weren't really white. And that lineage goes back to North Africa, which is black. You can try to remix it, but North Africa some centuries ago is pretty black. A lot of these invaders came later, but a few centuries ago, North Africa was very, very black. Uh, there's, I, I should have kind of prefaced this, and uh, I mean, anybody can look this up. I'm not making it up. Uh, there's three, genetically, if you take out the religious aspect, uh, genetically, there's at least three types of Jews, major clusters. Uh, Ashkenazi, who are the white European Jews, uh, Ben Stiller, um, Ben Shapiro, they're kind of examples of Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, there's the Sephardic Jews and the Mizrahi Jews. Uh, the Sephardic so, and Mizrahi oh, are North Let's African, the Ashkenazi are European. So, 
Okay, so now you're saying there are white Jews. No, no, what I'm saying is um, there's three groups. Uh, two of the groups are mostly North African and Middle East. One of the groups has a substantial amount of European admixture, but they're different to Europeans um, in the same way that um, Southern Italians are different to Northern Italians. Um, people might uh, not know that and might think they're the same. Okay. Um, but there's well, a, now, let's there's a well, difference now, between. Okay, so there's all these differences. What makes a person genetically pure white? Uh, there's no such thing as pure white. Uh, Europeans right. today are a mixture of three historical right. groups. It's the so, uh, right. early f- two farming groups and one right. Anatolian. Right. So, so if there's no such thing as pure white, you can't say which group of Europeans is less white than the other. It's all, uh, but, it's all relative to whatever person is kind of making the designation. White is white. Uh, and, no, no, I can't. No, no, no. I can explain uh, why if, if you like. I would, I would love that. You just said you can't. Nobody's yeah, I, just I can explain white. It, yeah. Explain it, sir. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> uh, if you'll permit me, I can post something in Jumbotron. If you don't want me to, I won't. But no, 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 no. Just explain. It makes, well, just make it simple. What's yeah? You, so you, you um, just, you, well, you just prove the point. Yeah. I'll, I'll explain it. Right. I'll explain it. No problem. I'll explain it. It's easy to look at visually, but I will explain it verbally. No problem. Um. Uh, Europeans are made up of three groups, uh, two farming groups and one hunter-gatherer groups. Um, oh, those God. three groups came together to make Europeans. Uh, as soon as you add a fourth or a fifth group, um, that's when you're getting divergence. That's when you can claim that uh, these people are substantially let's, let's different down. to slow Europeans. Down, slow down, slow mm-hmm. down, slow down. Okay, mm-hmm. you said yes. these groups got together to make Europeans. What well, that, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. You got to slow that down. What are you talking about? So um, there was three. Uh, have you heard of David Reich? He's a very famous geneticist. No. Uh, David Reich has a book on this, who we are and how we got here. Uh, anybody can look it up. But basically, um, uh, one group came from kind of uh, modern day Iran. Um, that was the, I forget the abbreviation, but there's an abbreviation for it. They were an early farmer group. Uh, they m- migrated up to um, Europe. Uh, there was already an existing group there, kind of more towards the North Europe. Uh, they were a, um, <clears throat> from memory, they were kind of a, another farming group. Uh, then there were the uh, Eastern Europeans. Uh, they were kind of um, a hunter-gatherer group. Uh, those three groups intermixed. Um, you can see in the chart, uh, if anyone goes to my wall and just go search on my profile and type 20, uh, you'll see a colour chart. The colour chart will show the admixture. Uh, now, all Europeans have three of those groups. Um, I think it's EAA. Which, I forget the abbreviation. Which but one of them are the groups. Ne- which one is the Neanderthal group? Because there's a Neanderthal group there too. Uh, yeah, the the Neanderthals are not. I mean, they were a group a long time ago, but they're not accurately reflected um, in a cluster analysis. They basically would have mixed in um, with uh, at least two of the groups: the Siberian group, um, which was the Northern European group, and uh, probably the um, Eastern. Uh, again, David Rice got a paper on that. I need to double check the paper, but uh, yeah, Neanderthal admixture, uh, as far as I know, is in every group except Sub-Saharan Africans. Right. Um, but, uh, the, my my point right. is that three these three genetic families or groups or clusters, uh, they came together to make Europeans. Uh, all Europeans have some mixture of these three groups. When you add a fourth group and a fifth group, such as the Ashkenazi Jews, have a Levantine admixture. Uh, none of the other Europeans have this Levantine admixture. This is what makes them genetically distinct. So any any uh, family group that has those three clusters, you can call them European. When you add a fourth and a fifth cluster genetically, uh, that's when you're starting to diverge away from the now, European Now, where did the – okay, um, let's slow down. Let's slow oh, let's down. So these three groups, where did these groups come from? And how did they become white-skinned Europeans? Um, and, well, now we're really getting to the weeds. I need to refer to the book, but I'll go off my memory. Uh, if I make any mistakes, uh, anyone please fact check me. But um, uh, your question was, sorry, can you ask the question again? Because I'm just trying to go Okay, off my out of these three groups, you said there were these three groups that came yes. together yes. somewhere. Where did they came from somewhere? Uh, so how yes. did they become um, white-skinned Europeans that we yes. see now? Great question. Um, so one of the dr- groups came from modern-day Iran. Uh, I believe it was kind of around, around the Iran-Georgian area. Um, they would have had dark skin with uh, dark eyes, I believe. So right. dark skin with light, sorry, dark skin with lighter-colour eyes. 
Uh, that's one of the groups, okay, from Iran, Iran, Georgia, etc. Uh, one of the other groups uh, came from the uh, northern, northern European area, um, kind of around Siberia. Um, that's where it's believed in David Reich's book, if you believe what he says. Um, the blonde hair mutation comes from northern Europe. Um, uh, that's where blonde hair originated. Uh, and then you had the uh, um, kind of, uh, you know, brown-skinned e- uh, Eastern European hunter-gatherers. Uh, so those three groups uh, came together and then they formed the modern-day Europeans. Uh, one group gave the lighter skin. The other group gave the kind of blonde hair. And then uh, the other group contributed something different. So it was a Siberian group from memory that contributed so then, most of the light skin and blonde hair. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because Come on, let's look at some of the genetic flaws there because when um, white mixes with a black admix- admixture, the offspring comes out black or brown. All right. Uh, so, great. Yeah, great point. You get something called genetic drift. Uh, genetic drift is once the groups uh, come together, uh, you can get a natural selection effect. Um, uh, you know, uh, na- natural selection meaning one group leaves more surviving offspring. Um, so you are correct. When the mixing took place, um, there would have been, you know, some, uh, you know, some of the groups would have been darker, etc. Um, any mutations that occurred to give any group an advantage, uh, that group would have left more surviving offspring, especially in the north uh, where there's kind of lower sunlight, etc. Um, the kids would have, uh, via genetic drift and natural selection and what they call fitness, uh, fitness meaning leaving more surviving offspring, uh, you could easily see the skin color have changed from kind of a uh, light brown to a more kind of white pale color. Uh, genetic why, drift, mutation, why, and natural and why, selection is the answer. What, what, and why, and why? Why did it go from brown to pale and blonde hair? Why did they become depigmented? Uh, well, this is because of natural selection um, and mutation. Uh, sorry, natural selection and differential mutation, right? Mutations cause um, differences in people, and then you get genetic drift and natural selection. That is to why say, would you have, um, why, would you have, why, why would you have a mutation like that, particularly in northern Oh, now I get Europe. what you're saying. Now I get what you're saying. Yeah, why would, so you, the why, advantage, why would you have that mutation? Because that's not yeah, the, natural to well, the ad- the advantage of white skin is it can absorb more vitamin D. Um, the less vitamin D you have, you get all kinds of bone deficiencies, iron deficiencies, all kinds of uh, uptake deficiencies. So um, having a lighter skin, it's believed. This is why in Nordic countries where they don't have much sunlight, uh, they're kind of the most pale. Uh, having a lighter skin absorbs more uh, sunlight. Uh, that's why in kind of warmer climates, you generally see um, the people are melanated or darker. This is to protect against the UV rays. Um, in warmer climates. So colder climates produce lighter skin to absorb more vitamin D and uh, things of this nature because they have less hours of sunlight as well in the Nordic countries. So uh, vitamin D absorption is one hypothesis. Uh, No one knows for sure, but that's the most popular theory that uh, lighter skin absorbs vitamin D. Well, you know what one of the theories is? Well, let's, because what you're, the guy who you're you're, uh, naming, um, some David Ross, some of his theories kind of contradict some of the other theories written by certain scholars, was that one thing we know, there was a group of black people who migrated from Africa, the Grimaldi people, who migrated into Europe. They were black people, and their um, artifacts and bones are still up there. They they still excavate them. Um, There were a lot of black people in Europe. Um, That's why they dug up Cheddar Man. Remember a few years ago, they dug up what a Briton a British person looked like a few thousand years ago, and it was a black person with blue eyes. I remember mm-hmm. that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. So there were the theory was that black people were migrating up there from Africa into Europe, and they got caught in the last ice age, the Wormian Ice Age, right? And that Wormian Ice Age locked people in there, and the depigmentation happened in order to cope with being in that ice age. If you're in a, an area that's full of snow and it's cold, darker skin would be an issue. So natural selection, they said they were depigmented and they became depigmented in order to better cope with the environment. This is what some of the scientists have theorized. This is why the nose became more aquiline and um, the hair grew longer in order to cover the the vital organs in the neck and things like that. So there's different theories, different theories. The point yeah, is... Yeah, Tariq, you're very well, you're very well uh, researched on this. I'm very impressed, Tariq. I didn't right, know you right, were right. kind of well-versed in this kind of area. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've read different theories. I've read different theories. But the point is 
the the theory is that the Europeans had a form of albinism. They were already black people, and they had a form of albinism. And the the people with the albinism kind of mated with each other and continued with more albin, albinized offspring. So that was the theory. That was the theory. So that goes back to the whole IQ thing. So if the Europeans who actually came from African people, when did the IQ get lower? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Because that's the um, when did the IQ get lower of Europeans? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Or, or yeah, yeah. So yeah, if if Europeans, based on that, the Wormian Ice Age theory, were that they were part of the Grimaldi people who got caught up in the Wormian Ice Age and they became depigmented. Um, if they were initially African people, when they became um, depigmented, did the IQ increase? You know, because that, that's where the IQ thing gets all over the place. When did when did this IQ thing kick in? What makes one other group have a more superior IQ? If they came from um, a certain other group, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Richard, um, look, I'll be honest, and anyone who says they know the answer to this question is lying. People have only have hypothesis, so I can present one right. here. Um, uh, Richard Dawkins has a book called The Selfish Gene, and uh, in that book he basically talks about um, historically evolution happened at the extremes. That is to say, um, you know, if you had a tiny advantage, um, in a modern-day society having a small advantage does not matter where you have, you know, everyone's needs are taken care of for the most part. Uh, very few people starve to death, uh, you know, in a West, in kind of a Western developed country. But uh, if you imagine five, ten thousand years ago, um, having a tiny advantage uh, could help you leave more surviving offspring, and that's the key. So uh, the idea is, uh, in times of food scarcity, um, you know, when everybody was being violent, fighting each other, there was barely any food. Um, having a kind of tiny IQ advantage would mean uh, you could probably leave more surviving offspring. Um, whereas the people who are lower IQ, they would leave less surviving offspring, if any at all. Uh, so a lot of the lower IQ people would have been killed off um, because uh, in evolution happens uh, at the extremes. It happens quickly um, when there's a, you know privation, starvation, a lot of violence. So uh, the idea is basically that uh, within any group, you can pick any group you want, uh, Europeans, um, you're going to get some dumb people, some smart people. If you only let smart people have kids, then you're going to produce a smarter group of people. All right, let's go back, though, because, see, now, if you will have a higher IQ, you wouldn't have to resort to be violent to kill the so-called lower IQ people. The person doing the killing is more animalistic and barbaric, and that's based on numbers, even numbers that they do now. They say people who have um, um, uh, less intelligence quotients, they, or people who are not able to verbalize themselves in an intelligent way, are more physically violent to compensate for the lack of intelligence and um, um, verbal responses. So if yeah, you're that's true. That's this, a great point. That's a great point. Right. So if you are violent, that means you are less intelligent because intelligent people can just kind of figure things out without killing every damn body, which is what black people were doing. Black people were living in more tropical, warm, inviting environments. So you didn't have to kill nobody in order to eat. So your survival mechanism to yeah. conquer people, I don't think it has to do with intelligence. I think it's, a, it's if we want to look at it from even your logic, comes from an innate savagery. Now, some people can be more savage than others because you have a, I have to survive mindset. That doesn't make you more intelligent just because you're more savage. Like I'm more yeah, willing to be clear. Kill. Yeah. I just want to make clear. I just want to make clear. I have not said the word savage or called anybody savage, just in case anyone's right, right, listening. Right, right, right. But, but, um, yeah. but when you say um, you certain certain groups will kill the other groups who are less intelligent, no, you don't know. Intelligent people don't have to do that. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I can introduce uh, one thing here: Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, which basically says uh, when all your needs are met, it's easier to be peaceful. Uh, when you're near starving to death. Uh, you know, you will eat your own sibling if it means surviving. So uh, Maslow's right. hierarchy is kind of an artificial uh, thing. There's going to be limited resources in certain countries. So uh, even if you produce the highest IQ group, if you put them in an area of limited resources, they will become violent uh, in accordance with Maslow's hierarchy. So it's not right. necessarily the case. Uh, if you're high IQ, you can never be violent under any circumstances. Right. Now, people are products of their environment. And if you come from a very hostile, unforgiving environment, 
you're going to be reflective of that environment where in, in again, in, in black environments and African environments where black people were indigenous, dark people were, they could be more harmonious because they knew the earth. They, they, they knew nature. Nature was on their side. They could walk with their clothes off and they were one with nature. When you live in a hostile environment where you're stuck in an ice age and in a cave and you have to eat raw meat and you have to wear a, a bear's wool on your back and all of this stuff and you got to knock your lady in the head and rape her in order to have a baby, yeah, that creates a certain mindset, right? Historically, that, that would create a certain mindset and a certain level of savagery. Some people would hypothesize. So I don't think that has to do anything with intelligence. I think the more intelligent people will say, hey, how can we live peacefully and we can feed a community peacefully and live harmoniously peacefully without having to resort to savagery and start murdering people just because. I think this is why so many black societies were of high intelligence early on. Egyptian societies, um, which were black, they were able to thrive for thousands of years because of the camaraderie with the environment and them understanding how to live peacefully. They weren't known to be a violent people. I think the less violent you are, the more intelligent you are, right? Uh, is it your view that in, um, uh, sub well, this is a question to you, like in sub-Saharan Africa, there's, uh, you know, multiple groups. Uh, let's take three main ones, uh, West Africans, East Africans, and uh, South Africans are the Khoisan, are the kind of black people they click. They have kind of a lighter, a lighter skin. Yeah, they um, look Asian. Uh, they look Asian, yes. Yeah, they do. They do. That's correct. Um, and also, if we introduce the um, uh, the pygmy people, um, is it your or, you know what is your view on intelligence for those uh, four or five groups? Do you think they're all equally intelligent, or would you say maybe uh, do you think the Bantus are more intelligent than the pygmies? Uh, for kind of reference, the Bantus score eighty on IQ test. The pygmies score uh, fifty five, even though they're remote. You know. That's impossible to quantify. It's almost impossible. It's literally impossible to quantify because they still live in a traditional hunter gather existence. If we were to get those people somewhere in a classroom or uh, give them a tutor and um, teach them certain things in their own language, we don't know what level of intelligence these people might have. We just don't know. They just choose to live in a more um, traditional way that's conducive of their tribal um, cultural history. So the, the, what level of intelligence as compared to um, the education system now, that's, it's like apples and oranges. We can't really compare that. Yeah, the reason I ask is because uh, occasionally I'll hear Ethiopians say uh, West Africans are low IQ. Then I'll hear West Africans say Nigerians are low IQ. Um, so I don't know that much about those areas. So I was just curious, obviously, your uh, you know, some of your descent obviously is from sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm just curious, yep. uh, you know, wh why is there so many groups kind of insulting each other in that way? Uh, is there any truth to that in your view? Or anything yeah, we don't, that we don't do that. But, uh, well, I'm a foundational black American. We don't, we don't talk to each other or go into each other about IQs because we look, we're, we're one group. We know that we're one group. Um, we don't play that tribalistic stuff over here. That makes us different. And that's why, um, as far as black people globally, we've been the ones who are the representatives of black people globally. Whenever you think of a black person, you think of a foundational black American because we've been the most on code. And we've been on code is because one of the reasons why we don't have those tribal differences. We all kind of click up with each other and we know that we have to interact with each other in order to survive as an ethnic group. So that's why we've been as relatively successful. I say successful in a relative sense because we're still under the system of white supremacy. So, Yeah, I, I uh, definitely appreciate that approach. And um, uh, I want to ask you something, if I can, about um, uh, some, some of the rooms I've been in in the spaces uh, they've said that this is I've heard it said seriously. I don't know if they're joking with me, but uh, they kind of say the white gene or the white mutation, the white skin. Uh, they believe it to be not of Earth uh, to have come from another planet. Uh, have you heard this? And uh, what do you think no, about this? I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't No, 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 I, no, that that would. You know, that gives white supremacists supernatural powers and they're not supernatural. That's not true. You know, black people kind of um, I, I don't know who does. I don't. That's probably some immigrants. who I don't know who said that. But foundational black Americans, I don't believe we said no shit like that. 
But um, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, let me let me get some more call. It, it, I think the conversation has been very real. Um, Thank you, Sharik. Check- it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I, can, just let me say one thing, if it's okay. Uh, I don't like to talk about race differences. People ask me about it. I only talk about individual differences. That is to say, uh, differences in IQ from two people from the same group or same family. Uh, that's what I focus on. I don't uh, go around running around talking about race differences, even though people say that. So if people ask me, I'll try and answer. Uh, but my focus is individual differences, not race or group differences. But thanks for your time, Tariq. I uh, really appreciate oh, it. I hope to talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. That was interesting, right? That was an interesting conversation. Very, very interesting. All right. We've been on here for a long time. That was that was long. And y'all been hanging in there. But I think uh, there's a lot of people from overseas tapping in right now. But I, I thank everybody for tuning in and hanging in that long. We, uh, it was a long conversation. Shit, I've been on here for three hours, man. I'm looking at the time. Damn. But anyway, man, let me get out of here. Let me let y'all go to sleep and let me get my ass to sleep and all that. I know my wife is like, nigga, what are you doing? But anyway, man, look, go to rootworkstyle.com. Get the rootwork deodorant, rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. And um, go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio, because we're going to show, hopefully we'll have the everything ready so we can show the trailer for the new documentary. And anyway, you guys have a great night. Puppy Akute and Lola Vuve to you. Peace.